can support us completed novel house in link below clip. Thank you for coming and love the sharing story chapter 561 the speech that got to see the light of day once more. Pui? He actually said Pui? He really said Pui? Where's the academic speech that you were going to give? Damn, it was supposed to be an academic speech, no? What is this? What was this? What the heck are you saying? The first thought that came to the minds of many of the Peking University teachers was, game over. This nationalistic youth who cannot keep quiet for more than a second, has gone crazy again. Matsumoto stood up in shock. The other Japanese political delegates also stood up staring. But Zhong Yi looked back at them fearlessly and even raised his hand to point at them, asking the students of Peking University loudly, Let me ask all of you. On the anniversary of the massacre that has just passed. Did any high-ranking official of Japan express an apology for China? Did any Japanese express a tinge of regret regarding that incident? While we're here talking about how China and Japan should form a good friendship, the last of the Chinese comfort women are still seeking justice from the Japanese government. They have yet to receive a cent, an apology, or even a trace of remorse from them. While we keep saying that we should turn the page on the history between China and Japan, the last Chinese laborists are still seeking for compensation from the Japanese government and enterprises. But they are being mocked by their government, enterprises, and law. How about those Japanese enterprises that have disgraced their government? They are currently earning truckloads of money in China. Su Na drew in a deep breath. Professor Zhang also looked shaken. After that malicious pui, the burden and gloom that had been weighing on their chest was suddenly relieved, while leaving them in shock. The Peking University students could only look blankly at Zhong Yi. The host was also dumbfounded, not knowing if he should stop teacher Zhong. Zhong Yi said passionately, while we speak of getting on familiar terms with Japan and learning from them, our homes in the northeast are still polluted with millions of Japanese bio-warfare and viral warfare weapons, none of which they have taken responsibility for. While we bring up that we should adopt a new perception about Japan. The past few Japanese prime ministers have freely gone around and publicly urged the European Union to not lift the arms embargo against China. Yet they continue forging closer military ties with the United States to deter China. While we keep emphasizing the fact that our lands are only separated by a strip of water, Japan explicitly and implicitly supports or encourages the incitement of opposition to our cross straits relations. When we reach agreements with our neighboring countries on the borders, Japan continually uses tricks on its occupied islands to extend its territory to the East China Sea, attempting to seize our resources and seal us off. When we were willing to forget the past to focus on friendly relations with Japan, their authoritative agency released a survey stating that 60% of Japanese people patronize us, hate us, distrust us, and have deep contempt for us. In the post-war decades, we'd continued the pursuit of the absconded Nazi war criminals. Then, in order to be recognized as the sole government of China, we even gave up war reparations. We did not even intend to go after those Japanese war criminals who had their hands stained with the blood of our citizens. Every word was a stab in the heart. The Peking University students were enraged. Many people were already clenching their teeth and fists tightly. Zhong Yi put up his hand and said, All right. That's enough. Japan is still that Japan. Japan will forever be that Japan. We don't have a reason or a need to beg them to treat us with kindness and friendliness. But as Chinese citizens, we are hurting because of our soft, confused, and pretentious comrades. Yao Mi and the other students stared at Bai Yi. There were also many students who looked over at Professor Yang. But Zhong Yi continued, back then, Japan's China Expeditionary Army totaled one million soldiers. But the ones who did the dirty work for them, the collaborationist Chinese army, numbered more than two million soldiers. Back then, Japan's China Expeditionary Army killed 30 million of our comrades in the 14 years of War I. Yet 1.8 million traitors served them loyally by continuing the invasion and abetting the enemy. Back then, the countries and citizens who had been harmed by the German occupation received considerable reparations from them. The Germans also sincerely expressed their apologies and their will to reflect upon themselves. But for us, we signed away Japan's responsibility for their war crimes even though Japan had never sincerely expressed any regrets, nor apologized to us. Back then, the German Chancellor genuflected in front of the memorial, 
expressing deep remorse and the resolve to never go to war again. We did not get anything out of it, yet we initiated closer ties. We did exactly what we called a new perspective here today, to improve our friendship. Every word was going against Bai Yi and Yang Jian Dao. Bai Yi's expression had a great change. Professor Yang was about to blow his top as well. In a short span, the way the Peking University students saw them had totally changed. They became looks of disgust and indignation. The two of them had suddenly become the targets of the crowd. That's right. Friendship, my ass. New perspective, my ass. They purposely arrived late and made all of us at Peking University wait for them for nearly three hours, while you two, Bai Yi and Yang Jiandao, did not even make a sound, but instead attempted to educate our Peking University students. Criticize our Peking University students? Even wanting us to be friends? Make us forgive them? Does that even make any damn sense? What the f asterisk asterisk k was this kind of logic? Zhong Yi slammed his hands on the rostrum again, what friendship? What forgiveness? A devil never needs to apologize or be forgiven. Don't blindly promote the so-called superior systems. As a democratic country, if their citizens of the past had not existed, then there would have been no past wars. If the citizens of the present do not exist, then there won't be the current government. Do not be sucked into the so-called cultured and civilized side of Japan. Culture and civilization are the foundations of humans. In the last century, the Japan which had committed such hideous deeds actually had an ugly and hypocritical culture and civilization. Don't expect Japan to want to repent at some point in the future. A country that adopts the law of the jungle for their own country will never have a future. The Japanese translator kept translating and conveying the meaning of the speech to the delegates. He was already sweating all over. As a professional translator of Chinese, he had been by the side of many high-ranking Japanese officials through multiple occasions and had a wealth of experience, but at this moment, he was finding it difficult. There were also some words that could not be translated. Being such an experienced and excellent translator, how could he be facing such problems? Because the other party was using very unconventional words. There were many curse words which the translator had never needed to use before. This made his task of translating ten times more difficult. Beads of sweat were already forming on his temples. Matsumoto could no longer listen any further. The other officials in the political delegation were so furious that even their lips were trembling with anger. They were sincere in visiting China, hoping to come over to express their friendship. But who knew that today, at this very moment, they were being scolded right to their faces by a simple Peking University teacher. Even scolding their country? Just what kind of a situation was this? This was a situation that none of them would have ever expected to be caught in. And yet, this was exactly what was happening. They've just met someone who dared to grab them by the necks and scold them to their faces, a teacher of the people. Zhong Yi laughed coldly. We will never forgive Japan. What are we forgiving them for? If we are forced to pretend like we're magnanimous and gracious, disregarding all prior issues and only looking towards the future, waiting for them to drop the hostilities and gain enlightenment, then why can't we use those same reasons to forgive our fellow comrades who are deeply remorseful for the murders they committed? Why can't we give them a chance to turn over a new leaf? Zhong Yi asked with every sentence. Let me ask you all. If a person murdered your mother, would you forgive them? No one spoke. Let me ask you all again. If a person killed your classmate's father, would you respect the murderer? Still no one spoke. John Yi angrily slammed his hands onto the rostrum for the third time, speaking louder and louder, then tell me. Japan. What should we respect you for? With a change of tone, he shouted and pointed at those people upstairs, then tell me. Japan. Why should I forgive you? Yao Mi stood up. Senior Song stood up. Li Li and Li Ying stood up as well. At this point, Zhong Yi's speech had been interrupted. By the sound of applause. Ba. 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 Endless applause that had been stifled for so long was now finally able to appear in the hall. It resounded resolutely throughout the hall. Too awesome. Well scolded. 
That felt so good. That's the Zhong Yi I know. How satisfying. I don't want to listen to Zhong Yi's speech on academics. This, this is what you call a true speech. This is the real Zhong Yi. When teacher Zhong scolds people, he always looks so handsome. That's right. Every time teacher Zhong does something like that. He always looks like he's glowing. That was extremely well said. Japan. Why should we forgive you? I was so badly affected by Professor Yang's and Teacher Bai's speeches that I didn't know what to say. I felt like something was wrong but couldn't pinpoint what. Now I finally understand. It was exactly as Teacher Zhong said. Teacher Zhong has totally shouted out everything I felt inside. The countless Peking University students seated downstairs were now gradually rising up excitedly. A few Peking University teachers like Su Na and Professor Zhang secretly cheered. What a teacher! That was so beautifully said. Some of those who felt that Yang Jiendao and Bai Yi had given good speeches earlier suddenly seemed to be deep in thought, while others lowered their heads silently. No one knew that this impromptu speech had possibly come from a newspaper article from Zhong Yi's previous world. Why, possibly? Because even Zhong Yi did not know for sure. The article was too inconspicuous, so obscure that it was difficult to trace its source. Zhong Yi could still remember the first time he saw this essay on the internet. It was titled, Why Should I Forgive You, Japan? 2. It wasn't very well known, or perhaps it should be said that this article did not gain much attention, so much so that almost no one knew about it. However, some essay's charms and strength lay in just that. It could be hidden in a dark corner somewhere covered in dust. But on the day the dust is blown away and the light of day shines upon it once more, the strength of its words still haven't faded. They still glow as bright as gold. Today, Zhong Yi had taken this speech out. Through Zhong Yi's modification to fit the situation, it had become his work and was given a chance to see the light of day again. Chapter 562 The whole audience cheers. An uproar. Astonishment. The entire Centennial Hall had been shaken by Zhong Yi's shouts. Bai Yi angrily roared, that madman. He's really a madman. A Japanese female reporter said, we will raise a protest. This is an insult to us. This is the lowest form of personal attack on us. Many of the Chinese reporters had been greatly inspired. They focused their cameras onto Zhong Yi, not wanting to miss out on any footage of him. There was a great deal of satisfaction on all their faces. However, the Japanese reporters all looked very angry, as though they had been on the receiving end of a great insult, incredulous that someone actually dared to scold them and their country in such an official setting. Why is he like that? What is he scolding us for? Does he even know what he is saying? Ah. The students of Tokyo University were also raging. A few of Peking University's heads of school could only look at each other in shock. Matsumoto and the political delegates, their faces as cold as water, lodged stern protests. The accompanying Chinese officials were also shocked and confused, not knowing what they could say now to appease the situation. A Peking University Japanese department teacher jumped up and cursed, this damn nationalist. A staff member from the Office of School Leadership said irritatedly. What kind of behavior is that? What has the war got to do with the Japanese citizens? Don't let him keep speaking. Get him off the stage. Cut the MIC. A few of them could not understand why a century-old institution like Peking University, the top institution in the country, would employ a hooligan like Zhong Yi as a teacher. This was a huge mistake, no matter how talented Zhong Yi was or how much Zhong Yi had contributed for academics. This sort of role model behavior would nullify all of that. Hiring him was the worst decision that Peking University had made. Zhong Yi's treacherous speech this time would surely cause Peking University to be on the cusp of the news. It would definitely put them in the sights for controversy and criticism throughout the world. But Zhong Yi still went on. He was not done with his speech yet. Then Zhong Yi continued speaking, these days, there are many voices that claim that scolding others is not right. That there are also good people in Japan, so don't be a nationalist. The war has nothing to do with the commoners. Scolding others does not mean that you're patriotic but only tells people that you have low standards. 
Japanese technology is more advanced than ours, so we must learn from them. The Japanese have higher standards than us, so we must be accepting of them. Boycotting Japanese products is meaningless when we should be looking to raise our standards instead. We must be logical when it comes to patriotism. It seems like those people do not understand why boycotting Japanese products, not eating Japanese food, and scolding Japanese people can be labeled as patriotism? What they are thinking is that they're the more elegant and classier patriots. At this point, Zhong Yi raised his head, as though he was responding to those who were so pro-Japanese. Actually, I'm wondering as well. I am also very amazed. If our behavior does not reflect patriotism, then does that mean that people like you who only eat Japanese food, buy Japanese products, never speak ill of Japan, and always defend Japan whenever you see anyone criticizing them, are the patriotic ones? His tone had changed, as though he was laughing at them. Applause burst again. Peking University students were all cheering. The staff from the Office of School Leadership nearly suffocated to death. John Yi said with a cold smile, they have high standards, they do not scold Japan. But that's not because they are patriotic while being more elegant and logical than us, not because they are classier than us, not because of any of the highfalutin reasons they claim. That is because, they do not have any hatred for Japan at all. They have long ago forgiven Japan or maybe not even blamed Japan at all before. That is the reason. Thunderous applause. The Peking University students expressed their difficult to describe emotions with loud applause for this. Zhong Yi adjusted his shirt and tie, presenting himself decently, and then said, in an official government occasion, there are some things that some would never say as it would offend others, show a lack of demeanor and standards, presenting themselves as inelegant, attracting doubt and controversy. But I am not afraid to offend, I don't have good demeanor, I have low standards, I have always been simple and inelegant. I am not afraid of being doubted and controversial. So whether or not there are cameras around, no matter who is here today, no matter how many reporters are here today, no matter how many leaders are looking at me right now. Zhong Yi turned to look at the cameras and declared as he put his hand over his chest, what the others dare not say, I, Zhong Yi will say it. At any point in time, at any place, at any occasion, whoever asks me the same questions, I have the courage to answer anyone just like today, Zhong Yi shouted once, boycotting Japanese products, is a sign of patriotism. Zhong Yi shouted twice, scolding Japan, is a sign of patriotism. Zhong Yi shouted thrice. Scolding those who defend Japan by scolding us, is a sign of patriotism. Many of Peking University's teachers were staring with their mouths agape. Holy sure asterisk T. Holy sure asterisk T. Holy sure asterisk T. Zhong Yi said fearlessly, is scolding people right? Scolding people is not right. Sorry then, we have low standards, we are inelegant, but this is who we are. Just a common citizen's way of showing his love for his country. Zhong Yi dragged out his words. But this is just us, an ordinary citizen's most humble patriotism. Vigorous applause once more echoed through the entire hall. All of the students had stood up to clap with all they had. A few female students were so excited by this talk that they even had tears in their eyes. What a good, scolding Japan is a sign of patriotism. What a good, most humble patriotism. Just as Zhong Yi had said, there were some words some people did not dare say, but he dared. In the faces of the visiting delegation, in an occasion faced with so many Chinese and foreign reporters, Zhong Yi shouted out what no one else dared to say. The people upstairs were already in full rage. But Zhong Yi looked directly at them and said, I have a poem here I would like to dedicate to our friends upstairs to end my speech with today. Poem? He was going to compose another impromptu poem again. The applause quickly stopped as the Peking University students perked up their ears in anticipation. Zhong Yi melodiously recited, How to let you encounter me. At my most beautiful moment. For this, I've prayed to Buddha for 500 years. Prayed he'd bring us together by destiny. This was a masterpiece from his previous world, a work by Eleven Murong entitled A Flowering Tree. When Zhong Yi recited it, Yao Mi was taken aback. Senior Song had a look of suspicion while countless other Peking University students all did not seem like they understood any of it. It wasn't that they did not understand the meaning of those words, but they did not understand why Zhong Yi would randomly recite a love poem. Prayed for 500 years? Brought together by destiny? 
brought together with who? Japan? What was this supposed to mean? But Zhong Yi continued, Buddha thus turned me into a tree. Growing beside the path you must pass. In the sunshine, in full bloom gingerly. Every blossom a hope from my past life. No one could deny that this was indeed a good poem. Up until here, the mood of the poem was vividly established, but still, no one could understand, how was this not a love poem? Zhong Yi smiled lightly. When you near. Please listen closely. The quivering leaves are the warmth of my waiting. But you eventually moved on, oblivious? Falling all over the ground behind you, my friend, are not petals, but me softly saying. Zhong Yi raised his hand and pointed at the Japanese. Idiots! At this instance! At this moment! When the word idiots rang out, the whole hall exploded into laughter. Those who had been scolded by Zhong Yi in the most direct and vulgar manner had their faces flush so much they looked purple. Meanwhile, those from Peking University were shocked and could not believe what had just happened. Su N.A. Professor Zheng. Chang Cage. Zhen Xu Quan. Dean Pan. Xin Y.A. The foreign mathematicians, percent carat and asterisk, asterisk and carat percent. Prayed to Buddha for five hundred years, brought together by destiny with them, turned into a tree beside the path they must pass, hope from the past life, warmly waiting, all just to have a face-to-face -face chance to softly say, idiots. Everyone was shocked by how daring Zhong Yi was. In this second, the large centennial hall went fearfully quiet. The Peking University students and teachers went quiet, the Chinese reporters went quiet, the Japanese political and university delegations also went quiet. The atmosphere seemed to have frozen for a second. When they had been targeted, who stood up for them? John Yi. When they were sternly scolded by the professors and teachers, who spoke up for them? John Yi. So when John Yi finished reciting his poem, many of the Peking University students looked upstairs at the delegations. Suddenly, a chubby Peking University student suddenly stood up and pointed upstairs, shouting, Idiots! The third-year senior who had been protected by Zhong Yi earlier also stood up from her seat, looked at those upstairs and shouted out loudly, Idiots! Yao Mi stood up. Idiots! Li Li stood up. Idiots! Senior Ju drew a deep breath and pointed upstairs. Idiots! At the beginning, there was only sparse and inconsistent shouting. But gradually, everyone's shouting became more consistent as one, ten, a hundred, two hundred people. All Peking University students joined in. Idiots. 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 Finally, even Senior Song the straight A student stood up to shout out, Idiots. Five hundred students. A thousand students. One thousand five hundred students. All of the Peking University students had joined in to shout and denounce them. All of them were standing up together. All of them were pointing their fingers at those upstairs. What sort of a place was this? It was Peking University. This was the country's best and most elite education institution. Among the students, there were last year's scholars from Beijing, Beihe, Jiangsu, Gansu, and nine other provinces. There was also the best testing student from the National College entrance exam two years ago. There was a top student from Peking University's postgraduate program. Can you imagine the scene? A Peking University teacher, leading a group of more than a thousand elite students from across the country, pointing their fingers at the Japanese delegation, shouting one louder than the other, idiots. My God. Just what kind of image is that? Just what kind of sight is that? The Peking University teachers were all shocked. The Chinese reporters were all shocked. The Japanese delegation was shocked. Chapter 563 The Peking University Students' Epic Act Outside the auditorium. Everything was as usual. A few security guards were patrolling the grounds relaxed. What kind of big shot came today? I heard it was a delegation of Japanese officials. No wonder. I was wondering why it sounded so tumultuous inside. Yeah, I'm not sure what they're doing inside either. Maybe there's a speech or something? Why is it so raucous? It's like someone is shouting. 
but shouting what? I can't hear clearly. Huh? It sounds like someone is shouting, idiots. You're the idiot, ha ha. How could that be happening in such a setting? Even if you're mad, you wouldn't possibly choose such a day to make trouble. Wouldn't that cause a big ruckus? I suppose so. I probably heard wrong. But a few seconds later, the shouting grew louder and louder, sounding clearer and clearer. The three security guards looked at each other in shock and were suddenly overcome by a sense of surreality. F asterisk asterisk K. They really did not hear wrong. It was really, idiots. The people inside are really shouting, idiots. A staff member from the neighboring hall ran over in a panic, asking, what's going on? What the heck is going on? What sound is that, another staff member came running from a hall further away. What happened? The shouting was very rhythmic and loud, so there was definitely no chance they heard wrong. Not only around the grounds of Centennial Hall, even the other halls in the surrounding 200-meter radius could faintly hear the shouting. The hall was soundproofed, with Peking University having spent large sums of money to build the most spectacular soundproofed hall in the country, and yet the clamor inside right now could be heard from so far away. The volume inside must be off the charts. A hallucination. It must be a hallucination. The security guards and the school staff were all feeling very confused. Then, the security guards' walkie-talkie crackled. A call for assistance? They knew by now that something big must have happened. Without a second word, they rushed into the hall with their batons. A few staff members from the other halls also followed behind to go in to help. When the main door was opened, the loud shouts from inside nearly pushed them back out. The sound wave kept hitting them. It was nothing like what they had seen before. They were all startled. Subsequently, many other Peking University students who heard the commotion rushed over as well. When they saw all that was happening in front of them, they stopped in their tracks, their jaws dropping to the ground. This. This is. Damn. The hall was exploding. The shouts were deafening. A thousand angry voices, a thousand hands were all directed at the upstairs of the hall. The security guards and many Peking University students who had just come inside immediately noticed Zhong Yi standing at the rostrum, and recognized a few of the students from the audience. Wasn't that Zhao Yuzhou? An officer from the student council. They could see Zhao Yuzhou, with a reddened face, pointing and shouting at those upstairs, idiots. Idiots. Damn. And that person there, wasn't that the scholar from Jiangnan province this year. I thought he was a just a bookworm. He usually doesn't even talk much in class with his classmates. But right now, this scholar's face had anger written all over it. The usually quiet and reserved him was shouting much louder than the twenty or thirty people around him. His voice had gone hoarse. Idiots. Idiots. Ah. And that person. F asterisk asterisk K, even the student council's vice president is scolding. You're the student council's vice president. Why are you also leading in the jeering? Bye yeah. That, that, could that be Sister Yang? The National College Entrance Exam Scholar from three years ago and top scholarship winner for two consecutive years, the publicly acknowledged straight A student? But who was this person in front of them right now? Just who the heck was this woman standing on the chair and shouting, idiots? Oh my god. It's getting crazy. Everyone's gone crazy. A number of students who had just arrived on scene went off again to quickly make some calls. Bangsy. Come to Centennial Hall quickly. What's the matter, man? I'm sleeping. Just come quickly. Something big has happened. The Japanese political delegates have been surrounded by our school students. A thousand of them. You know, a thousand. They're all pointing to the delegates and calling them idiots. Get lost. Trying to prank me. Your sister. It's F asterisk asterisk King Real. Beside him, a Peking University female student was calling her dorm mate. My my, quickly gather the people from our dorm. Come to Centennial Hall now. Ayo, this is too exciting. It's crazy over here. 
the Japanese political delegation has been scolded. How's that possible? Have you ever seen over a thousand people squeezed into a place, simultaneously scolding someone? Get lost, he he. Let's make a bet. If you lose, drinks are on you. Are you trying to trick us into going all the way there? Don't even think about it. Do you think we're stupid? Damn it. Wait a moment, I'll let you listen to this. Listen to it. Did you hear? Damn, 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 damn. It's really true. Wait for me. We'll be there immediately. Immediately. Idiots. Idiots. For the fortieth time. For the fiftieth time. For the fifty-fifth time. The doors to the hall opened again. Many of the Peking University students who had just heard of the news rushed over. Some of them were also present at this morning's showdown with the Tokyo University representatives. When they saw what was happening, under the influence of the atmosphere, a few of them also suddenly started to shout along with the audience. One by one, more and more of them joined in. The shouting became increasingly synchronized. Under the effect of this resonance, the decibel level of the angry shouting rose so high that it nearly blew the roof off the hall. Nothing else could be heard in the hall other than the synchronized shouts of idiots. No one had asked them to do this. Zhong Yi had only shouted that once. However, that resulted in the Peking University students unifying together to spontaneously shout the same. With one, there was two, with two, followed a hundred, then a thousand. At this moment, an esprit never before seen had united all of these students and braided them together like a rope. What straight A student? What national college entrance exam scholar? What male or female? What elite party member? What officer or vice president of the student council? In this moment, everyone had dropped their statuses or the labels that others had given them. They all just scolded the things they dared not scold before and did what they used to not dare do. Scold the Japanese head on? Scolding the Japanese delegation head on? This was an epic act of defiance they had never even thought they would do, let alone do for real. But today, at this moment, under the influence of Zhong Yi's amazing speech, they scolded. They did it. They had committed an act so epic that it would shock anyone and everyone. Stop scolding, a Peking University teacher yelled from the front row. Another Peking University teacher tried to bring about some order. Sit down. All of you sit down. There were even teachers who went around dragging some students back. Zhao Yuzhou, you're an officer of the student council. How can you lead the others in doing this with you? Are you out of your mind? Hurry. Tell the other students to stop shouting. But Zhao Yuzhou did not even bother with the teacher and just continued pointing upstairs, shouting, and scolding. The publicly acknowledged straight-A student, Sister Yang, couldn't be bothered by whether she'd be able to qualify for this year's scholarship. Nor did she care if the school authority would discipline her. She was a very headstrong woman. If she wasn't as tall as the male students around her, then she would just step onto the chair. Her voice was much louder and sharper than the guys anyway. The teachers around were unable to persuade or stop what these students felt to be the most humble patriotism in the hearts. Stop? Shut up? Wait until the country's standards surpass Japan before we evaluate them. Wait until our fields of science and technology surpasses Japan before we judge them. Wait until the Chinese per capita income surpasses Japan before we comment on them. By that time, we will be qualified to point our fingers at them. Go f asterisk asterisk k yourself. They have already been quiet for too long. They have kept their silence for too long. They did not want to wait any longer now. It has to be today. It has to be now. We might not be able to have achievements in science and technology, we might not be able to increase our per capita income. We might even be labeled as people who have low standards who hold the country back. But there's one thing that we're able to do. There's one thing that we can achieve. Point at the faces of the Japanese. And use all of our strength to shout at them. Idiots. Chapter 564 Didn't I say to not let me give the speech? Collapse and downstairs, the scolding came like a condemning wave. 
Upstairs, the people were utterly discomforted. Baiyi slapped his hands heavily onto the chair's arms. Unforgivable. Professor Yang nearly blew his top. That John Yi. I'd said earlier that he should never have been allowed to step into Peking University. As a teacher of the people, he's leading people to scold others? Leading so many of our students to scold people? He's going to rebel. Motsumoto, dollar percent carrot and asterisk sad smiley. An official who was with the delegation, dollar percent carrot and asterisk sad smiley. The Japanese translator declared loudly, we will lodge a stern protest. All of your actions are undermining the relationship between our countries, and negatively affecting our bilateral cooperation in many areas. A leader of Peking University immediately turned solemn and said, that is the view of one of the teachers from our school, but his view does not represent Peking University's view. Nor does it represent China's. An individual's view? He even felt guilty when he tried explained it that way. Your sister. With so many people downstairs scolding them, this individual's view does indeed seem much more than just one individual. But with what happened until now, what else could he say? He could only explain it that way. Besides, he also knew that this political delegation led by Matsumoto was only one of several that involved the education sector. His words couldn't represent those of the other political delegates nor could it represent Japan. However, this incident today was really too serious and tricky to handle. It was something that had never happened before in Peking University, but if you said that it would really affect many areas of their country's bilateral cooperation, then that would be too far-fetched. Multiple projects worth billions of dollars and the ties between the countries, oh, just because a commoner from a certain place scolded you all, just because some students from a certain school scolded you all, you can just stop all cooperation at the snap of your fingers? Can you just sever ties so easily? That would be a bit too trifling and wouldn't be that easy. After wrangling for a bit, Matsumoto and his team could not bear to stay around any longer. Their eardrums were nearly bursting from the incessant, raucous din. He swung his arm as he turned around to leave, the other delegates following behind and busily whispering. Only the university delegation was left behind now, and with no more cooperation on the books, they left as well. Cooperation? What cooperation? With so many angry voices in close proximity, if they stayed behind, God knows what would happen. They might even get beaten up by the students. After all, they had been late to the ceremony by more than two hours. All of them left together. Or rather, they left with their tails tucked between their legs. Although the delegation left in an imposing manner, speaking ruthlessly and sternly protesting, in actual fact, they were feeling very nervous and afraid. With over a thousand students in the hall and even more gathering outside it, if each one of them spat at the delegation, they might even drown. They knew they had to leave immediately. The Japanese reporters observed for a little longer before deciding they could no longer stay around. They then hurriedly took their leave. They had come here today with pride and a sense of superiority, knowing that as foreign reporters, at a time when the Japanese prime minister was visiting China, they would be treated like honored guests. Some groups had even begged them to report about them in a more positive light. But none of them could have expected that at this Peking University stop, in this country's best educational institution where the teachers and students were of the highest standards, they would be scolded. They were even scolded in the most direct way that the Chinese would scold with, being called idiots. This was truly an unpredictable outcome no one could have taken precautions against. This was too unreasonable. This was really too unreasonable. Some of these Japanese reporters nearly fainted from anger. Only the Chinese reporters looked like they were on steroids as they stayed behind to capture everything that was happening with their cameras. They even managed to get the footage of the moment when the political delegation and Japanese reporters were chased away by the scolding. That's fascinating. This is big news. Before I came here today, I thought that, since this was political coverage, there wouldn't be much to look forward to. But now that we are looking at all that is happening, it seems like all of this will be headed for the headlines. And it won't just be the headlines for a day. This is at least two or three days worth of headlines to deal with. Can this footage be broadcast? I don't know. It might be dangerous. We still have to record it. 
this footage is too powerful because of the student's bravery. It's the first time I'm experiencing something like this. I never knew that these straight-A students could be so courageous and upright. Ari, it's because Zhong Yi's speech was too powerful. I seriously listened to it just now. When it was finished, even a person my age felt like joining together with the students and scolding. The main point is that I'm not a nationalist. Pfft. It's Zhong Yi again. With his talents, why doesn't he do anything the right way? Yeah, it's as if the best steel is never used to make the knife's edge. This person is too good at attracting trouble. This time, it's no small issue of just scolding some other celebrities. This is him leading a group of people to scold a political delegation. This surely won't end well. He's gotten himself into big trouble now. Why is teacher Zhong's temper so terrible? The Chinese reporters were relatively more objective about the situation due to the nature of their job. They were some of the few in the hall who had maintained their calm during this incident. Of course, there were a few male and female reporters who had joined the students to shout out, idiots, after the speech moved them, but they were very quickly stopped and talked down by some of the older and more experienced seniors. They did not want to create any potential trouble for their employers. The students might have already scolded the Japanese, but as people of the media, they definitely ought not partake in such scoldings, especially when it was such a big event. The main leads walked off. At the end, the Peking University students scolded in chorus another two more times before gradually stopping. Some of them had scolded so hard they nearly got hypoxia at the end. They had to sit down to rest to catch their breath. Some others scolded until their voices went hoarse and had to get some mineral water from their friends before gulping down the whole bottle. After more than 10 seconds of silence. Suddenly, out of nowhere, people started applauding. It grew louder and louder. Oh. They've been chased away by our scolding. Damn it, what have we done? We chased away the political delegates with our scolding. My God, we're too cruel. What a great feeling. That was too damn fun. I didn't even know that I could scold people. Many Peking University students were cheering as they applauded hard, not for anyone but themselves. They clapped for their long suppressed and silent selves. That they could actually scold others with no standards. That they could, be so bold to do something like that. Suddenly, a head of the school shouted from upstairs, All of you, stay where you are. No one leaves this place. Wait until your teachers or your parents come to bail you out. Ah. What do we do? What else can we do? Everyone, on my signal, comrades. Let's run. When the signal was given, all the Peking University students in the hall roared a battle cry and dispersed. Some of those who could not react in time were stunned for a second before quickly joining the others in escaping. Run. Don't get caught. Everyone, it's every man for himself. Battle comrades, we'll meet up again when we get out of here. As they ran, they laughed like they were having fun. There was no chaos when the doors opened. Even though the exit was not that big, everyone did not squeeze to the front to try to get out. Instead, they gave way to each other, the freshmen going first, followed by the second-year students, and then the third-year students it was very organized. After having gone through a battle together in the hall, everyone had become comrades and were feeling very united. Under the screams of the heads of the school, the security guards had wanted to take control of the situation, but since there were too many people, there was nothing they could do. They did not even dare do anything since they were the smallest group around. Eventually, they could only look on as all the students left the hall. Informing parents about misdeeds in university was a rare occurrence. It was unlike primary or secondary schools, and hardly even heard of in a university. But today's incident had clearly become too big. Even if the students were expelled from the school, it would not seem like a heavy punishment. Of course, Peking University could easily expel one student if he or she dared to point and scold at foreign guests of honor. No one could raise an objection to that. But today's situation was clearly very different, as almost 2,000 people had scolded the guests of honor. Do you know what the enrollment figure of Peking University was for this year? Expel all of them? That was impossible. Unless they wanted Peking University to close down. 
unless they wanted the angry parents of a few thousand students to descend onto the campus of the university. The law does not punish numerous offenders. That saying was a fine example of what was happening here. Expel? That was not a realistic action to take. What about other kinds of punishments? A little less than 2,000 people were involved in this incident. Even if it was just filling in the procedures, it would take the teachers three days and three nights to complete. Yes, they wouldn't be able to finish writing. And so, it seemed they had no options they could consider. After thinking about it for a long time, the Peking University heads finally thought of something. John Yi. It was all because of John Yi. The students could run, but surely you cannot run. At once, the school heads upstairs and the teachers downstairs gathered together and stood below the stage, staring at Zhong Yi who was still standing at the rostrum. The school heads were full of wrath. Su Na had a look of worry. Professor Zhang didn't know whether to laugh or cry as he kept taking deep breaths. Dean Pan also held his head in his hands helplessly. Xin Yi looked at Zhong Yi, totally rendered speechless by his actions. Faced with more than a dozen Peking University teachers and leaders who all had different expressions, Zhong Yi knew he was in big trouble this time. He slowly left the rostrum. Sensing they were going to judge him and make him responsible for everything, Zhong Yi did not wait for them to say anything and just slapped his hand on his thigh very forcefully, while saying loudly, Aya. Why didn't any of you stop me? Why didn't you all stop me? Dean Pan. He looked at Dean Pan of the School of Mathematical Sciences. I'd already told you that I did not wish to get on stage to do this speech. I'd already said it. And yet you kept telling me that I had to do it, no matter what. Look, now we're in trouble. Dean Pan was dumbfounded and could only reply with an, ah. John Yi looked at the staff member from the Office of School Leadership who had passed him the message to make some script amendments and said, I'd already told you when we were backstage that we ought to find someone else to do this. Why didn't you listen to me? You just did not want to listen. Look at what happened now. Someone even got scolded now. Hi, what do we do now? What do we do about Peking University's reputation now? That staff member nearly cursed at his mom. Damn it. Does this even make sense? Does this even make any sense? The ones in the wrong now were us? We did not stop you. Zhong Yi also admitted his faults by saying, of course, I have some responsibility in this matter as well. Hi, my temper is really bad, I couldn't suppress the rage in me anymore when I picked up the microphone. Some responsibility? Is that all you think there is to it? The school heads. Xin Yi. The foreign mathematicians. The Chinese reporters. When they were faced with Zhong Yi's impromptu admission of his responsibilities, the head of the school was so angry that he no longer knew what to say. He could only point at him, looking exasperated but unable to find any words to say. His arms trembled with rage. Very quickly, he turned to leave as well, afraid that if he were to hear Zhong Yi speak any further, he would blow his top and die right there. Chapter 565 Leaving Peking University Collapse Outside the Auditorium it was already 4 p.m. in the afternoon. Cambridge University's baker had a face gasping in admiration of Zhong Yi who had came outside alongside him. He spoke in English, Zhong Yi, your eloquence in speaking was really eye-opening to us all. The foreign mathematicians had been present the whole time, with the translators translating everything Zhong Yi said in his speech. So they were also in the know of what had just happened. Zhong Yi said, oh, is that right? Baker commented, even at Cambridge University, the most elite teachers who research languages would probably not even be half as good as you. What kind of place was Cambridge? If you say that Peking University was the best educational institute in China, then Cambridge would be the best educational institute in the world. The difference in rank was huge. It could even be considered an entirely different tier of an institute. This was why Baker's comment spoke very highly of Zhong Yi, although it was not known if he was just flattering or speaking the truth. I am really wondering right now if you are actually a mathematician. In our mathematics world, how can there be someone who can articulate and speak as well as you? Xin Yi explained, teacher Zhong Yi of Peking University originally graduated with a broadcasting major. 
not only is he a mathematician, he is also a very famous and outstanding host in China. Baker clearly did not know this before. Ah. Most of the other foreign mathematicians were also taken aback. What? Only a few of them knew of Zhong Yi's background and were not surprised. Zhong Yi sighed. I'm not that outstanding, Professor Xin is really generous with her praise. My work in broadcasting hasn't reached the national level yet. I'm just somewhere in the middle, doing okay, he said humbly. What he said was actually true, though maybe he was far from even the middle. But in his work as a host, he was probably considered to have an excellent standard. However, if compared to an elite host, he didn't think he could compare. After all, he had never hosted a nationwide, satellite-broadcasted program before. He was always doing his work on the smaller platforms like the local channels or online television station. Thus, he was still considered inexperienced. A German mathematician said, I'm looking forward to Professor Zhong's programs then. Zhong Yi laughed. Sure, if you're all interested, I will invite everyone to the studio when I have a program in the future. I believe my next program will be happening soon. When he said that, he sounded a little compelled by his situation, but not exactly feeling depressed. He was rather accepting of all that had happened. The foreigners might not have noticed it, but the teachers from Peking University heard the depressing undertone in his words. Next program would be happening soon. Yes, it's about time you went off to do your new program. With today's mess, it would be a miracle if you were still around to teach. The punishment would definitely not be light. It even seemed that many of Peking University's teachers thought that doing a program right now would be taking it too positively. This incident, this mess might not even be resolvable anytime soon. Who knows how it will end up? Don't think that burning incense will help out again if you get banned once more. The mathematicians left. Zhong Yi sent them to the vehicles and went back with Dean Pan. On the way, some Peking University students passed by from time to time. When they saw Zhong Yi, they all excitedly waved to Zhong Yi to greet him. Teacher Zhong. Amazing. Teacher Zhong, you're so awesome. Well done. Many Peking University students who were not at the hall for the ceremony had heard of the incident from their classmates who were there. They heard that Zhong Yi led more than a thousand Peking University students in pointing at and scolding the Japanese political delegation as idiots. When they heard this, their blood boiled as the nationalistic youth spirit in them could only imagine what had gone on. They hated themselves for not being at Centennial Hall to witness it in person. Zhong Yi returned their greetings along the way. When he had just reached the teacher's office at the Chinese department, Peking University's punishment for him had already been passed down. Suspended. Classes stopped. The students who had applied for Zhong Yi's elective class were to apply for other classes within the next three days. This punishment was announced by Dean Chang Cage. With his classes stopped, it meant that he was suspended and temporarily relieved of his duties at Peking University, at both the Chinese and math departments. In normal circumstances, this punishment would definitely be considered heavy. Suspension was a punishment only mitted out when a teacher made a critical error. But for Zhong Yi's mess that he created today, why did it seem as though this punishment was too light? Only earned a suspension? Shouldn't he be removed from his post? Shouldn't it be a sacking instead? When Zhong Yi received the punishment details, he heaved a sigh of relief. It was a punishment he could still accept. He really wanted to retain the position of a teacher of Peking University. It wasn't only for his status and reputation. During his days here at the school and the time he spent with the students, he had started to like this place, the campus, and every one of the cute students of Peking University. This was why he did not wish to leave this place. Although a suspension meant he could not come here for the time being, or he might still have additional punishments lined up for him, at the very least, it left a thought for Zhong Yi. It meant that he could still have the chance to resume his classes in the future. Chang Cage looked at him. Hi, you are really. The department's secretary, Jin Shuquan, said disappointedly, it's only the first day of the semester and you've already made such a big mess. You can't give classes anymore now, just because you did not think before you spoke. Was that worth it? Worth it? But Zhong Yi did not think the same as him. 
he always said what he wanted, did whatever he wanted. It was as simple as that, because if you did not live life this way, then it would truly be a life not worth living. You would end up in a coffin, regretting the times that you did not speak up. Chang Cage said, go back home and rest for some time. Secretary Zhen and I will try to help you deal with the matters here, see if we can appeal for you. But if there's even a chance to resume your classes, it might not be in the near future. Probably next semester. So just be prepared for it, all right? Zhang Yi suddenly said, thank you, Dean Chang. Thank you, Secretary Zhen. The fuss I kicked up has made both of you worried about me. It's all right. I'm fine, and I will accept my punishment. Since he had already done it, Zhong Yi was prepared to shoulder the consequences. Besides, it wasn't his first time anyway. He looked calm, like nothing had happened at all. If this punishment were given to another Peking University teacher, that person would probably faint upon hearing it. It would feel like the sky had fallen on them or the end of the road. However, Zhong Yi was different. He was a battle-hardened person. Suspension? Sacking? Ban? Jailed? What had he not done before? So, with these experiences behind him, his mental strength was clearly different from others. DIDI. A text message came. When Zhong Yi looked at his cell phone, he saw a message from Dean Pan of the School of Mathematical Sciences. The message displayed, the title of associate professor will not be withdrawn. It still belongs to you. Rest for some time. We will all wait for your return. The title of associate professor won't be withdrawn? John Yi knew that Pan Yang must have spoken up for him, otherwise, with his mistakes, he wouldn't have possibly been able to retain the position without having even gone through the proper channels. Of course, a part of this outcome was probably due to Dale's conjecture too. For a global mathematical conjecture that was so important and on such a large scale. Even if Zhong Yi had committed an even graver mistake, Peking University wouldn't dare to deny this achievement of his. He guessed that the reason why he had not been sacked was likely related to this matter. The Peking University authorities had probably deliberated before meeting out his punishment that offered a glimmer of leeway in it. Peking University would still protect its own interests. Although those heads of school nearly died of anger because of him, in the end, they still sought to protect him. From a certain angle, his punishment was probably given so that they could answer to the public. Exhaling, Zhong Yi finished packing his work desk very quickly. He picked up his belongings and said, All right then. I'm leaving. Su Ene was slightly more emotional, her eyes red, as she said, Teacher Zhong. Professor Zhang was also looking a little unhappy. Ari. A young teacher from the Chinese department said, It will be a little difficult getting used to not having you around. After Zhong Yi had arrived at Peking University, he had brought the Chinese department a lot drama as well as joy. The teachers who usually only had a decent relationship with Zhong Yi, or did not talk much with him, were now feeling a little disappointed that he would be leaving. Zhong Yi smiled and said, it will be fine. I might be able to come back in the future. When the time comes, we will be able to work together again. I'm the sort of person who doesn't have a good temper and often gets into trouble. But you all should know that I bear no bad intentions. I just speak whatever I think. Some of us might have been good friends. There are others whom I have not spoken much to, but I would like to thank all of you for taking care of me while I was here at Peking University. Su Na turned away, secretly wiping away her tears. It would have been okay if Zhong Yi did not say that, but when he did, she could no longer hold it in. In Peking University, Su Na was probably the one who had the best relationship with Zhong Yi. They weren't just colleagues. Privately, they were good friends as well. Professor Wu, come back soon. We will all be waiting. A middle-aged female teacher nodded. Yes, we will wait for you to return. Let's go downstairs together, Professor Zheng said. Chang Cage also said, yes, let's go together to send you off. Chapter 566 Incident Details Exposed On the official website of Peking University, the decision to suspend Zhong Yi's classes was posted with no reason or explanation given. The details of the punishment were posted directly onto the notice page of the website in a highly visible location. Some netizens who were browsing the page saw it by coincidence. 
A. Zhong Yi? Class suspended? What happened? Isn't it the first day of school at Peking University? Why did they suddenly suspend Zhong Yi's classes? I was still looking forward to the videos of his new classes this semester. What happened? I don't understand either. Are there any Peking University students around? Please explain it to us. Yeah, does anyone know anything at all? The news had spread to Weibo, Tieba, and some other forums. Gradually, the number of people who were paying attention to this news increased. Everyone wondered why Peking University had suspended Zhong Yi, unable to make heads or tails of the whole thing. It was only the first day of school and classes had not even formally started. So why would a suspension be given out of nowhere? Many of Zhong Yi's old friends were also roused. Yao Jiansai posted on Weibo, what's up this time? Dong Shanshan also posted a series of question marks below. Skit actress, C.I. Shoufang also posted, what trouble did little Zhong get into again? What big matter is it? Otherwise, it wouldn't have called for a suspension, right? A netizen posted, yes, the classes were all scheduled in advance, especially the elective classes which require the student's registration. If they suspend his classes now, then how much manpower and time will they need to waste to get things back in order? Besides, it sure would be difficult for the students to arrange and would definitely mess up their schedules. What's so important that they had to stop his classes? He has even been relieved of his duties? What's up with teacher Zhong Yi again this time? Could it be that he has destroyed Peking University? Online, everyone was left wondering. Suddenly, a few netizens exclaimed. Damn it! Go switch on your televisions and watch Central TV. Quickly, quickly! Damn, something big happened at Peking University. It's a press conference with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Listen to it, quick! They shouted, with such surprise that many netizens also hurried to turn on their televisions to take a look. Some who switched it on late missed the beginning and could only watch from the middle of the press conference. Half a minute ago. At this moment, Central TV Department 1 was broadcasting live. The scene was at the news office where the spokesperson for the Ministry of Foreign Affairs had just started answering press questions. The spokesperson discussed the recent topics of the Sino-Japanese political visit and cooperation projects, the pollution control standards of Japanese enterprises that had settled in China, as well as the negotiation process for related projects. Of course, there were also a series of questions regarding the future cooperation between the two countries. On the floor, there were many reporters from both the Chinese and many Asian media outlets. At the beginning, the questions were quite routine with the foreign reporters asking questions that were relatively peaceful and not too confrontational. But suddenly, a Japanese reporter who had just received a call had a big change in his expression. He immediately raised his hand to signal his intent to ask a question, but the spokesperson did not call on him. Disregarding the rules, he stood up directly and interrupted a Chinese reporter who was about to speak. He asked loudly in fluent Chinese, I just received news that our political and university delegations who were visiting Peking University today have been on the receiving end of insults by thousands of Peking University students who were led by a Peking University teacher. They verbally abused and threw personal attacks at our delegates. Would the spokesperson please answer and give an explanation for this? Is that the way the Chinese treat their guests? When these words were said, every reporter at the press conference was stunned. Verbal abuse? Personal attacks? No way. What the f asterisk asterisk k were you talking about? Not only the Chinese reporters, even all the other foreign reporters' initial reactions were of disbelief. They felt that this person had probably just latched onto some hearsay or rumors. What sort of a place was Peking University? It was China's most prestigious and best educational institution, where the most elite teachers and students were gathered. Their standards and upbringing were the highest. If your political delegation went to visit Peking University, why would they scold them for? Who would dare scold them? So how could something like a teacher leading thousands of students to scold people happen? This was virtually unheard of. Even if you thought on your feet, you should know that it couldn't possibly happen. A Chinese female reporter chuckled. Is he daydreaming? 
What on earth is he talking about? A middle-aged male reporter shook his head and said, Does he think this is a western country where people protest or throw shoes over almost anything? Leading a thousand people to scold? What an international joke. Right, the Peking University teachers are. Before he finished the sentence, the Chinese reporter was astonished for a second before asking, Hey! Wait! Wait a moment! Is Zhong Yi, a teacher of Tsinghua University or Peking University? The female reporter froze and said, Zhong Yi is a Peking University teacher. Another male reporter beside them also paled at this. That's right! He's a Peking University teacher. A young reporter swore and then said, how could I have missed that? What? Of the Chinese reporters at the press conference, some were involved in society news, some did international news coverage, while others specialized in field work. However, even if not all of them were considered entertainment reporters, all of them were familiar with the name of Zhong Yi. If the Japanese reporter had said another institution's name earlier, like Renmin University, Tsinghua University or Fudan, then these Chinese reporters would definitely not believe his words. They would even risk guaranteeing that this was a rumor. This was not something that would happen at a Chinese university. But since the Japanese reporter had mentioned Peking University when he brought up the incident, and with the legendary Zhong Yi working as a teacher at Peking University, putting these two together led them all to come to a conclusion which left them in shock. It might be true. This was most likely not a rumor. Wherever a thorn like Zhong Yi went, anything that happened would not even be considered surprising anymore. On stage, the spokesperson ignored the Japanese reporter's question. He looked back at the other reporter he had originally pointed at and said, Please go on with your question. However, the Japanese reporter angrily said, Please answer my question now. The Chinese spokesperson looked at him this time and said, First off, I have already picked this reporter and let him ask his question. By interrupting us, you are being very rude. Second, I have not been informed of the matter you have raised. I am not in the know. When we do get news of it, I will answer your question then. The press conference continued. That Japanese reporter sat down indignantly. On the internet. Central TV's live broadcast was shown throughout the nation. Countless people who were watching all became dumbfounded at this moment. Something big has happened. Since when did Peking University become so fierce? Damn, I wonder if it really happened or not. Could it just be a rumor? How could such kinds of incidents happen in China? Your sister. Have I been transported to another world? No matter how I see it, the fact it happened still seems unbelievable. Then, many people link the matter to the notice that they just saw on Peking University's website. Zhong Yi's classes have been suspended and he was relieved of his duties. It's Zhong Yi. Heavens. It's Zhong Yi again. Who can tell us what has happened? Are there any friends from Peking University? How did teacher Zhong cause such trouble again? Ah, a video clip was uploaded. I've linked it below. The number of people paying attention to this news grew greater, as they flocked to check out the clip. It was a video taken with a cell phone, so although the resolution wasn't very clear, the audio still had good quality. Anything that needed to be seen or heard could. The beginning of the video showed the lakeside. It was obviously Peking University's Weiming Lake. There were several large buses stopped on the road beside it. The whole scene was chaotic. There were many students shouting, looking, and sounding furious and heated. Get back, all of you. Do you all even know what situation this is? What day is it today? Such an important exchange and cooperation event is being held. Why are you all causing trouble over here? It was they who started to insult us first. Which faculty are you from? Which class? What the f asterisk asterisk k are you taking our pictures for? You'd better shut up. Teacher Bai. Bai Yi was sternly scolding the Peking University students. Through the dialogue, a lot of the netizens who were watching the video clip finally understood the situation. This was an incident where people from the Japanese delegation and the Peking University students had clashed. The next scene cut to the speeches being given at Centennial Hall. 
First to speak was Yang Jiandao, followed by Bai Yi. We're more backward than others, we need to give respect, we have to forgive, etc. As these ideological examples were raised, many people were extremely irked by what they heard. Suddenly, the video clip showed Zhang Yi getting on stage, holding a sheaf of papers and looking hesitant. After a while, he threw all of those papers onto the rostrum in front of him. Pui. Why should I forgive you? Japan. Boycotting Japanese products is a sign of patriotism. Scolding Japan is a sign of patriotism. Scolding those who defend Japan by scolding us is a sign of patriotism. Is scolding people right? Scolding people is not right. Sorry then, we have low standards, we are inelegant, but this is who we are. Just a common citizen's way of showing his love for his country. But this is just us, an ordinary citizen's most humble patriotism. When you near. Please listen closely. The quivering leaves are the warmth of my waiting. But you eventually moved on, oblivious? Falling all over the ground behind you, my friend, are not petals, but me softly saying, idiots. When that word came out, all of the netizens watching the video suddenly felt very pumped up, like a spout of boiling blood was about to explode out from within them. The video was at its climax. The Peking University students had all stood up from their seats in the hall. Idiots. 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 This scene could only be described as crazy. Online, the emotions of everyone also exploded to its highest point. The netizens had finally found out exactly what had happened at Peking University. It was true. Zhong Yi really led over a thousand students to scold others. They had always known Zhong Yi to be a thorn amid thorns, a nationalistic youth among nationalistic youths. They also knew that he was very gutsy and fearless of everything, but when they saw this video with their own eyes, they felt that they had still underestimated Zhong Yi's courage. This was no longer an issue of whether he had guts or not. This guy was too damn audacious. Zhong Yi's bravery was simply too much. Even the earth could not contain it. What a spectacular sight. It couldn't be looked at directly with your eyes. Countless netizens had already frozen at this. Suddenly, a Tsinghua University female student called out on Weibo, the warriors of Peking University are as great as can be. A Renmin University student passionately commented, Renmin University sends its congratulatory message. Well scolded. You've all done really well. That was so domineering. A few dozen of Nanjing University's freshmen and year two students suddenly came forward in support on Weibo, a like for the warriors of Peking University. Awesome. One by one. The students of many other universities also responded and gave their likes too. Chapter 567 The students go on strike. Dominating. How touching. This kind of incident can only be done by teacher John Yi. That was really satisfying. My eyes have gone red from watching this video clip. Which institution in China has ever had a moment in time like today's domineering spirit of Peking University? What a good and ordinary citizen's most humble patriotism. Just those words and scolding were enough to turn me into a diehard fan of John Yi. Me too. Plus one. Love John Yi the most. The Peking University students are too courageous and upright. Love you guys. If you want to marry, marry a Peking University man. If you wish to look for a wife, look for her at Peking University. Teacher Zhong is great. You guys are great too. So cool. This topic had rocketed up Weibo's main page of trending articles in a short period of time. With its momentum, it was probably only 15 to 30 minutes away from becoming the top headline. This was mainly due to the live broadcast of the press conference where it was first mentioned and also because it was a big incident, thus pushing up the topic. There were countless likes. Of course, there were also people who angrily rebuked the incident. For example, Renmin University's professor Ma Heng Yuen, who openly criticized the incident on Weibo, what a mess. What is the meaning of this? Is that the bearing of the country's best educational institution? Can he still be considered a teacher of the people? A black sheep like this should have been removed from teaching a long time ago. Suspension of class? Relieved of duties? This is letting Zhong Yi off too lightly. 
a current affairs commentator, in the past, Zhong Yi often spewed nonsense indiscriminately. However, at those times, what he said was always his personal point of view. But now, his speech and behavior are no longer as simple as just his personal viewpoint anymore. As a teacher of the people, not only did he not teach his students to be good, he even taught them to scold others. Teaching the students how to hate on others? This is clearly not how a teacher should behave. Speaking without thinking will only bring you a moment of happiness, but is there any meaning to that? You're a teacher and a public figure. Anything you say will always be watched by society. What you need to do is play the leading role, bring about a positive energy to the citizens. However, whether it be as a teacher or a public figure, Zhong Yi has undoubtedly failed in his duty now. That's right. It's him again. We're seeing Zhong Yi again. Zhong Yi is still the same old him. He's really too much of a troublemaker. With a teacher like this, how can the student's parents not be worried? A constant wave of criticisms. In just a few short minutes, many experts and academics had already condemned Zhong Yi multiple times. However, the people supporting Zhong Yi numbered far greater. A social affairs commentator retorted, how is positive energy defined? In my opinion, positive energy is not something you can just determine superficially. It does not have a form. Does swearing make something carry negative energy immediately? Anything that does not conform to the mainstream opinion means that it carries negative energy? Who sets the standards on such things? It's not set by other people but the masses themselves. I've watched the video clip too. Does Professor Yang's and Bai Yi's speech represent the kind of positive energy that you all are talking about? Telling the students that our country is not as good as another country, that we are lacking in standards, that we're a backward country, and how we should respect a country that basically does not respect us, is that what positive energy is? Bullsh asterisk T. Let me tell you all what I understand as positive energy. In the situation where the delegation intentionally arrived late by more than two hours, and under the critical speeches of Yang Jiandao and Bai Yi, when I heard Zhong Yi utter the word, Pui, that is what I call positive energy. When I heard Zhong Yi say, idiots, that was also positive energy. So what if it was swearing? So what if he scolded others? Language is only a form of expression, while positive energy runs in a much deeper level of the spirit. An online commentator, Zhong Yi's speeches are also so full of passion and charisma. After listening to his, Why Should I Forgive You, today, I feel that, in the field of public speaking in our country, Zhong Yi's level can already be considered top of the field. This legendary person has once again brought us such an exciting speech. I know that what I say now may cause some disputes or leave many unsatisfied with my views, but I must still say this from the bottom of my heart. I must give Zhong Yi a like based on just the word idiots that he used to scold them with. Zhong Yi is one of the most talented persons I've ever known. The reason why he keeps attracting so much doubt and criticism is also probably because he is so talented that even Earth can't hold his talent anymore. Scolding teacher Zhong Yi? That bunch of people must be crazy. The delegation was intentionally trying to create trouble by being late and not giving us face. The two teachers from Peking University even went as far as scolding our own people over this, but teacher Zhong stepped forward to rebuke with some fair words, so what do you all mean? Are you all unhappy with that? Support. I'm unconditionally giving all my support to Zhong Yi on this matter. While the foreigners scolded us and looked down on us, none of you spoke up and just kept quiet. But when someone finally leads us to speak up for ourselves, to fight back, you all would rather stand up to criticize teacher Zhong instead. Go f asterisk asterisk k yourselves. Bunch of idiots. You all act as though you've seen your ancestors when you meet these foreigners. You don't even dare raise your voices to them, yet you're willing to clash with your own comrades. You all are exactly the types that are only good in a civil war, but useless in a national war. No matter how others rate him, to me, Teacher John will always be an excellent teacher of the people. His excellence might be missed by some, but we all know it. Suddenly, Ma Yuan, Tang Dazhang, and many other experts and academics who had denounced Zhong Yi along with Peking University students earlier had their Weibo, flooded with an outpouring of replies by the netizens. Idiots. Idiots. The replies were all done in the esprit of today's scolding by the Peking University students. Of course. 
Zhong Yi and some of the experts and students who had supported his actions also had their own Weibo flooded with messages. Brain dead. Crazy. A bunch of idiotic nationalists. With just a spark, a huge wave of scolding had suddenly erupted. As it got boisterous online, many news outlets also began publishing their reports on this matter. And so, the number of people who were following with interest also rose sharply. The people were heatedly discussing it. At this moment, at Peking University, Zhong Yi's colleagues had come to see him off downstairs. He was about to go get his car to leave but was then surrounded by countless students who knew of his departure. He could not move at all. Yao Mi was there. So was Senior Song. Those whom he had taught before and others whom he had not were all here for him. A few female students were surreptitiously wiping away their tears, while most of the others were roused. Even with the topic so hotly discussed online, there were barely any Peking University students who had come forward with their account of the incident. That was because they were too busy to go online at all, as after they had heard that Zhong Yi had been suspended and relieved of his teaching duties, all of them came running over in anger. Two third-year female students even took the time to go back to their dorm to quickly make some banners. It was just a simple long piece of paper on which they had written some words using markers. The writing was rushed and somewhat lopsided, but the words still looked very firm and strong. Return teacher Zhong to us. A few girls were holding it up at the side. Teacher Zhong. Don't go. Why are they making you stop your classes? If you leave, then we won't go to classes either. Right. We will all boycott our classes. We will go on a strike. Let's go look for the school heads. Let's go. We will take this up to the school authority. Return teacher Jong to us. Return teacher Jong to us. With more than a thousand people, their voices shouted in unison. Not far off, more and more Peking University students also joined in spontaneously. When Su Na saw this, she suddenly felt very gratified as she realized that the students were not stupid. They knew who was good to them and who spoke sincerely to them. They knew all of this clearly in their hearts, more than anyone. Chang Cage and Jin Shuquan both looked over at him, thinking that this teacher Little Zhong has really great influence. He could basically rally the whole crowd here. It was unlikely that anyone else in Peking University could do the same as him. Both of them had also learned that the incident had been leaked online and there were many people denouncing Zhong Yi, claiming that he was incompetent and not a good teacher. Actually, Chang Cage and the others, as leaders of the Chinese department, also agreed that Zhong Yi was really not suited to be a teacher. He was too hot-headed and impulsive. But right now, in this moment, seeing how thousands of students intended to go on strike, and even wanted to bring this issue up to the school authority just because their teacher had been suspended from classes, the emotions they felt from this were extremely complex. Incompetent? A teacher so well-loved and respected by the students, who would be in any position to say that he was incompetent? If he was considered an incompetent teacher, then in this whole wide world, how many teachers would be considered a good teacher? What was a teacher? What should a teacher do? The events happening in front of these teachers right now had set them thinking about all these questions. Chapter 568 Saying goodbye to Peking University again. A distance away. Other teachers realized that something was wrong. What's going on over there? Ah, why are all the students running towards the Chinese department? Good God, how many people are there? A thousand? I can't even see where the crowd tapers off. Not good. The students are going to make trouble again. It has to be the punishment the school mitted out to Zhong Yi. They must feel that Zhong Yi's speech was not wrong. That's why they're intending to protest against it. What are they shouting? Student strike? Ah. They are going to boycott their classes? That won't do. We need to inform the school heads immediately. This is going to be a big problem. By right, anything that happened to Zhong Yi should not have anything to do with the other teachers of Peking University. But when they heard that over a thousand students were intending to boycott classes, the expressions on these teachers' faces changed. The matter had escalated beyond just affecting Zhong Yi himself. Student strike? 
Just hearing these two words had already left several teachers green in the face. Do you even know just how many students there are in total at Peking University? In the thousand plus students who were planning to take part in the protest, some would surely be students of these teachers. There were students from the Chinese, math, physics departments, etc., and involved many of the faculties across Peking University. If they really boycotted their classes, then it might as well mean the sky had fallen. Peking University, and in turn the Chinese education system, couldn't possibly bear such an outcome. On the other side, the students were still shouting. Yao Mi raised her hands and screamed, Return Teacher Zhong to us. Senior Song also shouted loudly, Return Teacher Zhong to us. They were all familiar faces from Centennial Hall where Zhong Yi led the students in scolding the Japanese. Honestly speaking, Zhong Yi was moved at this. When he saw these roused up students, he hollered at the top of his voice, Go back, all of you go back. Li Li shouted, We won't leave. Yao Mi also screamed, Boycott our classes. Boycott our classes. Li Ying yelled. Senior Ju shrieked, If teacher Zhong's punishment is not withdrawn, we will hold a student strike. We will boycott all of our classes. Among the students, many of them used to dislike Zhong Yi. For example, Senior Ju was one of them. He used to cause trouble during Zhong Yi's classes. Many of them had privately talked about Zhong Yi on his first day at Peking University, gossiping and wagging their tongues, saying how they felt that, as a celebrity, Zhong Yi wouldn't be able to carry out the job of teaching, that he wasn't suitable to be a teacher. Having never been one before, how could he possibly teach the students of the country's best educational institution? Of the students who could be admitted into Peking University, few were not arrogant or proud of their own achievements. At the beginning, a large part of them had essentially not accepted Zhong Yi at all, and those who did, did so because they liked him as a celebrity, not because they wanted him as a teacher. However, some things always turned out quite strange. Zhong Yi had shown his rigorous and humorous, sometimes even amazing, standard of teaching. With his deep literary knowledge, he won over everyone again and again. From doubt to acceptance. From acceptance to love. From love to respect. Although Zhong Yi was only at Peking University for a short time and did not spend much time with the students, he had already won them over. He had won their respect and trust. With today's speech at the hall, it had pulled Zhong Yi's and the students' relationship even closer to the last step. Even though they knew that the student strike would have a major effect that could even lead to them to facing heavy punishments or even getting expelled, they still proceeded here without any hesitation. They couldn't bear for Zhong Yi, who had always stood by them for every incident to protect them with everything he had, to depart. Behind them, more than 20 Chinese reporters had arrived in a hurry with their equipment when they found out about the news. Some of them quickly set up their cameras around the students, while others squeezed into the student crowd hoping to get closer to get a good shot. But after a very long time, they still couldn't squeeze inside. In the distance near the school's main entrance, there were quite a number of reporters who were rushing towards the scene. These reporters were obviously not the ones who were at Centennial Hall earlier. They were a new batch of reporters who had probably hurried over after they saw Central TV's live broadcast of the press conference. Among them, there were even foreign reporters who had blonde or red hair. The whole scene was chaos. The reporters were all very focused. After scolding Japan, it became a student strike? It seemed that today Peking University would not be able to get any peace at all. Everything that could happen was all happening today. Boycott classes. Boycott classes. It became harder and harder to control the crowd. Chang Cage shouted, Go back, everyone. Jin Shuquan also raised his voice, Stop this. GAO back to your dormitories. Professor Zeng said, listen to teacher Zhong and calm down, everyone. They knew that if the students really went ahead and boycotted their classes, then this whole issue would totally end up out of control. However, since the students were at the apex of their anger, they would not have it any other way. They continued boisterously chanting their mottos of, return teacher Zhong to us, and otherwise we will boycott our classes. Although Zhong Yi was touched by this, he was also angry at them. He was angry with them for suggesting that they would boycott their classes. He did not wish for his actions to implicate the students along with him. 
he understood that the school authority had already been light in their punishment, and handling of his scolding of the guests in Centennial Hall. They did not take any action against the students and only punished him alone. This was the best outcome for them, so if the students insisted on boycotting classes, then it would mean that, the law does not punish numerous offenders, would no longer be applicable. What do you all think you're doing? Ah. What are you all trying to do? John Yi bellowed at them. Only when they heard him shout did the students begin to quiet down and look at him. John Yi pointed at them and said angrily, you're just making things worse. This is nonsense. Boycott classes? Boycott classes for what? Keep your mouths shut. You think it's as simple as just saying it. Why did your parents raise you? Why did your schools nurture you? Why did the nation train you? In the remote regions, do you all know just how many kids are hoping to go to school? All of them long for the chance to attend university and gain knowledge, but, all they can do is read books in their small village that have been used dozens of times before and nothing else. All of you have already received the best resources. You've made it into the best institution in the country, but for the small matter that just happened, you're thinking of boycotting classes. Say that again to my face. Yao Mi became silent. The other students fell silent too. Zhang Yi's tone eased a little. I'm leaving Peking University today, so this will be the last time I'm speaking as your teacher. I'll give you all one last lesson. Remember, no matter when it is, no matter what happens, never ever say that you will boycott classes so easily, because you all don't know how much effort the classes you casually say you will skip have been built up with by teachers, past and present. I do not need you to treasure this lesson with your lives. I just hope that you'll all be able to put it into a little corner of your mind, and respect it. A sociology teacher nearby heard this and nodded her head. How well said, this Zhang Yi. Just when he was about to leave the school, he had finally said something good. Chang Cage and Zhang Shuquan also looked at Zhang Yi before breaking out into smiles. Who said that Zhang Yi only knows how to scold others? Look, this guy could speak philosophical too. The students all heard but did not know how to react. Zhang Yi smiled. All right, disperse then. It's not like I was fired or anything. It's just a suspension, who knows when I might be able to come back again to teach. The days are still long, ha ha. I'm really touched that so many of you came to see me off today. This is making me quite reluctant to leave. Yao Mi was crying. Teacher Zhong. The third-year female student who had been shielded by Zhong Yi earlier also broke down in tears. We don't want you to go either. Senior Song and many other female students had their eyes reddened from this. Zhong Yi said, I'm leaving now, take care everyone. Teacher Zhong. Teacher Zhong Yi. Woo woo woo. Zhong Yi got into his car without looking back. He gripped his steering wheel and clenched his teeth as he drove off, not daring to take another look at his students. But as his car drove past the crowd of students, he stole a quick glance and realized that the students were all following closely behind his car, thousands of them. He had wanted to speed up but could not bear to do so. He stopped, got out of the car, and said, Yao Mi, Little Song, Little Ju, Li Li, Li Ying, you guys lead the rest back. Those were the only few names he could remember by heart. Then he got into his car again and stepped on the accelerator. However, Senior Song did not listen. Senior Ju and the others also followed closely behind. When the BMW inched forward, they also took a step forward. With the car driving ahead, thousands of people followed behind without a sound. This scene was really phenomenally touching. Even those reporters who had followed along and were experienced in many situations had never seen something like this before. This sort of respect, this sort of sincere respect from the bottom of the students' hearts, was not something that one could just earn from anything. Zhang Yi could not bear to leave them behind, so he drove very slowly all the way to the school's entrance, but the students still did not disperse from there. When he looked again, he could not help but get out of the car once more. Looking at the thousands of determined faces, then glancing over at the willow's branches overhanging Wei Ming Lake, the clouds, and the setting sun, he could only softly sigh. He stopped right there. The students stopped too. 
Suddenly, when Zhong Yi thoughts unfurled, he opened his mouth and delicately recited, Lightly I leave, as lightly I came. I gently wave goodbye, to the rosy clouds in the western sky. The golden willows by the riverside, are young brides in the setting sun, their reflections in the shimmering waves, ripple in the depths of my heart. The water lilies in the soft mud, sway splendidly in the water's bed. In the gentle waves of Wei Ming Lake, I shall be a water plant. That pool in the shade of elm trees, holds not spring water but the sky's rainbow, shattered to pieces among the duckweed, is the sediment of a rainbow-like dream. Searching for dreams? Then pole a punt, to where the grass is greener still upstream, the boat laden down with starlight, singing freely in the gorgeous light of stars. But loudly I cannot sing, silence is my farewell tune, even summer insects still for me, hushed is tonight's peaking university. The students listened without making a sound, as if overwhelmed by emotion. The mood the poem portrayed, that sadness, they were both represented in every line like a blooded wound. John Yi took a breath. Quietly I leave, as quietly I came, I flutter my sleeve softly, not taking any wisps of the clouds away. He turned around, got back into his car, and without turning to look back, Zhong Yi stepped hard on the accelerator and drove straight out of Peking University. A saying goodbye to Cambridge again, that was changed by Zhong Yi into saying goodbye to Peking University again had left behind the last of his memories and affection, on the campus grounds of Peking University. Chapter 569 Charismatic as ever. When Zhong Yi drove off, he did not take away any wisps of the clouds, no, but he did leave a little exhaust in the wake of his car though. The melodious poem continued to ring in the ears of the Peking University students as they stood there, not moving from their spots or chasing after the car. They did not say a word, as though they were experiencing Zhong Yi's mood, experiencing just what kind of a person could write such a beautiful poem at such a time. His feelings for Peking University? His feelings for the students? It was probably fully described in the poem. Thereafter, when the students dispersed, someone posted that poem online. Following that, countless Peking University students had declared in unison a simple statement, Teacher Zhong Yi, no matter how long it takes, we will all wait for your return. Waiting for your return. Waiting for your return. Two hours after the incident, there was still no appearance by any Peking University student online. Although the netizens had seen the leaked video clip and knew what had happened in general, they still lacked the details and specifics of the timeline as well as the aftermath. They did not have the full picture and were urgently hoping to find out. When they saw these Peking University students appearing, and even appearing together at once, an overwhelming number of netizens surrounded them. We've finally seen one. Heroes. How are all of you? The heroes and heroines of Peking University. Here's a like for you all. Did any of you receive any punishment? How about Teacher Zhong? What happened to Teacher Zhong? Waiting for your return? Has Zhong Yi really been suspended? Soon, everyone also noticed the poem that the students had posted. A Peking University student told them sadly that these were the last words Zhong Yi said before he left. Saying goodbye to Peking University again, Zhong Yi lightly I leave, as lightly I came, I gently wave goodbye, to the rosy clouds in the western sky. Quietly I leave, as quietly I came, I flutter my sleeve softly, not taking any wisps of the clouds away. When they finished reading it, the netizens seemingly became silent for a moment. This was a very simple poem. So simple that even after reading it once through, it wouldn't leave much of a taste in your mouth. So simple that there wasn't even a word that seemed out of place. It was very different from Zhong Yi's past harsh killing style. This was just a very light and quiet poem. But it was also this poem that suddenly touched a lot of people. A fourth-year student who was about to graduate posted, I will be leaving the school very soon and the emotions I have are very complex. I didn't know how to express what I felt, but after seeing Zhong Yi's poem, I think that it reflects what I feel. Quietly I leave, as quietly, I came. A female netizen posted on Weibo, I saw someone scolding Zhong Yi for being a hooligan, that he was unfit to be a teacher. I would just like to say something to them, idiots. If a hooligan could write a poem like that, then I might as well be a hooligan as well, a great hooligan. Another netizen, that piece from the video clip, A Flowering Tree was already a great work in itself. 
The last few words at the end, Buddha thus turned me into a tree, growing beside the path along you must pass, in the sunshine, in full bloom gingerly, every blossom a hope from my past life, when you near, please listen closely, the quivering leaves, are the warmth of my waiting, but you eventually moved on, oblivious, falling all over the ground behind you, my friend, are not petals. Up to here, according to my analysis, the original poem should be, are not petals but my tears or my broken heart, or other words similar to these. It should be a love poem through and through, but Zhong Yi modified just the ending part of it and totally changed the poem to another style, but me softly saying, idiots. He only changed a sentence and it didn't even seem like an unsuitable modification. Zhong Yi has let me gain an even deeper understanding into modern poetry this time. Teacher Zhong has already managed to be as creative as he wants with literature. Whether it be oratory or poetry, he just goes at it according to his feelings and dexterously weaves the words together. For me, that is what a true master should be. Well said. Agreed. Suddenly, a Weibo verified teacher from Tsinghua University posted a message, without a doubt, the beginning and ending of saying goodbye to Peking University again is the pinnacle of Zhong Yi's artistic works. This is the best I have read among all his works in modern poetry. I dare not claim there are no other poems that would be able to stand shoulder to shoulder with it and be mentioned in the same statement, but at the very least, I can be sure that it would be very difficult to transcend the level of Zhong Yi's Lightly I Leave, as Lightly I Came with another modern poem. Disregarding Zhong Yi's character and temper and how controversial he is, just based on his literary standard, Zhong Yi has already reached a level that many would never be able to reach in their lifetime. The saying, cultured people tend to scorn each other, was true. But right now, a peer, an elite Tsinghua University teacher who was also involved in the same literature field had given such a review of the hymn. This perfectly illustrated just how great the poem was. The beginning and the end are really the work of genius. It's such a pity. If only Zhong Yi could change his character a little, he would surely be the leading figure in our country's literature world. No one could disagree with that. Too bad his temper is so bad, heh. I don't even want to talk about it. Yeah, that temper of his cannot be curbed by anyone. We don't even know if Zhong Yi can get out of the trouble he started today. Could he get banned again? If he does get banned again, then we'll surely have a good show to watch. I don't agree with the point of the poster above. I feel that it is exactly because of his temper that Zhong Yi can compose such great works. Right. Support Zhong Yi. Zhong Yi's short temper is what I like about him. Ha ha ha, his poems are wonderful, but he is more wonderful. Foot, I feel that this conflict this time should not be blamed on Zhong Yi. We should blame those who dared let him get on stage instead. I could faint from this, but is this the first day that you all got to know Zhong Yi? Didn't the earliest example of this happen when Zhong Yi won the Silver Microphone Awards and recited Dead Water to scold his unit? Did you all forget? At the live broadcast of Father Wei's memorial, Zhong Yi had used that some people to lash out at his leaders at Beijing television station at that time, did you all forget? During the press conference held by the Shanghai SARFT where Zhong Yi used the answer in the last speech, did you all forget? Also, when Zhong Yi recited Ode to Young China at the National Primary and Secondary School New Year Gala that left the audience in shock, did you all forget? So why did you all still dare to pass him a microphone and push him on stage? I'm utterly amazed by you all. You're the ones who are bravest. F asterisk asterisk K, that's true. Whenever this fellow is given a microphone, something's bound to happen. Yeah. This is an experience and a lesson as well. I trust that after today, whoever sees Zhong Yi with a microphone in his hand again will shudder at the sight of it. He's too damned frightening. That mouth of Zhong Yi's is as good as a military missile. You need to be on your toes at all times, otherwise, once your concentration lapses, he will immediately fly over and you won't even know how you died. In the end, the debate had come full circle, with people arguing whether Zhong Yi should have scolded Japan in such a public setting and whether it was appropriate or not. Some people supported it. Some people objected to it. It seemed like an unending argument. Not long after. The newspapers went on sale. New reports on TV were broadcast. Because the incident had kicked off a huge hubbub this afternoon, 
many people who did not have a habit of reading the papers or watching news simulcast were all curiously paying attention to them now. They wanted to know how the media would report this incident. What surprised most people was that news simulcast made no mention of it at all, as though nothing had happened at all. Life went on as usual. The news reported on some policy issues, and also made mention of the Japanese Prime Minister's visit to China to sign off on some key project agreements, etc. They even mentioned the smoke-free day which was a few days away but totally skipped the topic of the incident at Peking University. The people who had attentively watched the news could see that the matter was being covered up. Central TV had deliberately downplayed the matter and focused on other news instead, possibly at the request of the authorities above them. As for the reports in the papers, the handling of the issue varied. Some of the major newspapers also made no mention of the Peking University incident. Some others had recorded the incident as bystanders and reported it objectively to the readers. Meanwhile, the remaining ones criticized Zhang Yi openly and did not hold back on their words. There were also some newspapers that, perhaps for fear of touching on a sensitive topic, just reported the incident using general terms like, a teacher of the people, transmission of positive energy, or, not looking at the big picture, in a vague and inconclusive manner. The media seemed to have adopted a very consistent attitude with none of them praising Zhong Yi. However, the attitude of those online was much more ambiguous. Generally speaking, the opinions of the people varied quite a bit. The people who supported Zhong Yi's and the Peking University students' actions still numbered in the majority. Some fans even noticed that four or five celebrities, though not openly issuing any statements, had quietly liked the post that was titled, Peking University Video. The video clip had already been deleted, but the post itself could still be liked. As the video clip was re-hosted several times, there were still many websites that it could be viewed on. After getting deleted, it got posted again. After it was posted, it got deleted again. The file name changed. It was just like guerrilla warfare. The same situation had happened when Zhong Yi took part in the crosstalk competition. A newspaper outlet that was very critical of Zhong Yi had brought up this matter on its official Weibo. It was not known why they were so angry, but they started pointing out those celebrities who had liked the post, criticizing them for liking such a negatively influencing video as public figures and how it was a treacherous act. A mainland Chinese celebrity replied to the reporter, What are you talking about? Like? Oh, I usually have the habit of just liking a post after viewing it. This is a form of respect to the netizens who posted it and does not represent my personal viewpoint. Among these celebrities was Dong Shanshan who also liked the article. Only to see Dong Shanshan reply, Ah, my account was hacked earlier. This old classmate of Zhong Yi really did not speak any truth from her mouth. Hacked account. It's a hacked account again. Look, this was such a classic excuse that it could even be considered tradition now. When the newspaper outlet saw these replies, they were rendered temporarily speechless. This excuse that wouldn't even fool a fool had somehow made them unable to say anything else. But Yao Jintsai who had also liked the post was very honest. When he saw the newspaper outlet mentioning him with an at, not only did old Yao not bother with them, he even posted another comment, my old bro is as charismatic as ever. He did not confirm his attitude for this incident nor did he deny that it was him who had liked the post. Having gone through a lot with Zhong Yi during the crosstalk competition, the questioning and name-calling by the media did not scare Yao Jintsai at all. All kinds of fighting. All sorts of arguments. It was pandemonium online. Chapter 570 The Three Greatest Virtues of Old Wu Past 7 p.m. It was getting dark outside. Zhong Yi, who was still on the road, even answered a call. First, because the car ahead of him did not move an inch at all, and second, because another hundred cars ahead of that car did not move as well, he was caught in a traffic jam. The call was from Hu Fei, the man who got Zhong Yi his job as the host of BTV Arts Channel's lecture room. He was Zhong Yi's Bo One Sierra Leonean Leone, ex leader, and someone he enjoyed a good relationship with. Hello, Brother Hu. Have you finished your work? Free to talk now? Yes, I'm stuck in a traffic jam. Haha, <laughs> did you enjoy the scolding today? Hi, what's enjoyable about that? I got myself into such a mess and I don't know how to solve it. 
Come on. Although you put it that way, from what I hear, it doesn't bother you one bit. All right, I'll skip the platitudes. It's impossible to make you control your temper anyways. That's how you are, and I doubt you'll change. Heh, you know me well. I called to check on you and your situation, but hearing how spirited you still sound, I feel at ease now. Anyway, I just want to inform you that I just received my posting today and, from today onwards, will be transferring from BTV Arts Channel to Beijing Television. I will be bringing Hu Ge, Hu Di, Xiao Lu, and Dafei along with me, oh, you got promoted. Not really. The Arts Channel is just a local provincial station, whereas the satellite channel broadcasts countrywide, so how can it be the same? All right, brother Hu. Say no more. Hurry up and report about my news, so that the people may know about the glorious side of me and at the same time help to rid me of my current troubles. Please, let me off. I haven't lived long enough yet. Just by your scolding of the Japanese in such a public setting, who would dare report any positive news about you? I reckon that Central TV along with the other local or satellite news channels would not even dare mention your name for the time being. Please don't give me any trouble. Besides, our program team is transferring to Beijing Television to handle a new program, not the news. Ha, huh, I'm just joking with you. You started the mess, so you should clean it up yourself. Is it really that serious, Brother Who? What do you think? At this moment, another incoming call arrived. Zhong Yi took a quick glance and then hurriedly ended the conversation with Hu Fei. Following, he took the new call from Rao I mean. Landlady Auntie, Zhong Yi said. Rao I mean said directly, You do not need to pay rent for this month. Zhong Yi was delighted. Whoa, there's even such a good deal. Old Ario was notorious for her love of money. She was so calculative that she would would go down to the decimals when it came to charging miscellaneous fees, yet she was automatically offering a month's rent for free to him. Ario I mean spoke in a casual tone, kid, I've seen your scolding video. Not bad at all. You scolded well. You have a similar style to my younger self. Oh right, I had almost forgotten that the landlady was also famous for being a nationalist. Zhong Yi said, sure, I will continue to learn from you then. As for next month's rent, could it also be? Do do, the call ended. Zhong Yi was speechless for a long time, then called back and chatted with little Chen Chen for a while before hanging up again. 8 p.m. The road accident was cleared and Zhong Yi finally reached home. Upon entering the house, he saw his father sitting there uncomfortably with a sunken expression. His mom stealthily signaled to him by scrunching up mouth to let him know that his father was angry. Zhong Yi understood and quickly changed the subject. Ayo, the roads were really congested today. The cars in front somehow rear-ended, so I was stuck in a traffic jam for two hours. Mom, I haven't eaten yet and I am so hungry. Is there any food left? Didn't you say that you'd celebrate my becoming an associate professor? His mother asked in surprise, your associate professor title did not get withdrawn? Zhong Yi said, why would it be withdrawn? It was already approved. Besides, that is also a reward for my contributions to the field of math, so it should not be affected by other matters. His mother thought her son had messed up so badly that his associate professor position would be compromised. Who would have thought that it didn't affect anything at all? When she heard that, she felt happy and said, OK, Mom will heat up the food for you. His father slammed his hand onto the table and said, Heat up what food? Let him starve. His mother stared at him and said, Is there any meaning to that, not letting your son eat? His father said angrily, as a teacher, he led students to scold others in public. How does that make him look? And he calls himself a teacher? And he calls himself a member of the party? Dad, you are making it worse for me. Zhong Yi went over to sit and said, don't mention being a party member or a teacher of the people. Even a cornered rat will bite back. Moreover, it is precisely because I am a teacher and party member that I can't back off just when I see something is wrong. It is also why I must be the first to speak up, otherwise if we care too deeply about how we should carry ourselves as teachers and end up not daring to speak up about this or that, then who else would stand up for the students? If we, as party members, 
are always considering about the consequences of our actions and not daring to speak up, then won't there be nobody to stand up for the citizens? When his father heard this, he was a little taken aback. Zhong Yi added, it might not be right for me to scold others, but I have to make myself clear, Dad. I really did not lead the students to scold them, I only scolded once when I got into the mood while I was giving the speech and did not expect the students to join in the fray, and follow along in the scolding. I admit that I did not manage myself properly regarding that. Dad was stifled and waved him off. I can't out-argue you. His mother smiled and said, so should I heat up the food? Go ahead, his father grunted. I haven't eaten yet either. Zhong Yi immediately said, let me do it. Let me heat up food for dad. His father said, don't try to please me. Your explanation still does not make things right. Wait until tomorrow when I have sorted out my thoughts before I bring it up with you again. Zhong Yi laughed. Sure. I will listen receptively to you tomorrow. After dinner, the house was peaceful again. Zhong Yi went back into his room and thought about today. He did not feel too comfortable about all that had happened. He was about to contact Wu Ziqing to check out the situation to see if this matter had become too serious or not. But, afraid that she was busy or in the middle of a meeting, he did not call and just messaged her instead. Old Wu, as a newly appointed official, had to deal with many matters, so sometimes they would communicate by texting instead. Zhong Yi, Old Wu. A minute later, she replied, you're home. Zhong Yi, yes, have you watched the news? Wu Ziqing, I did. It was also brought up earlier during the meeting. Zhong Yi, hum, is the matter very serious? Wu Ziqing, it's not trivial. Zhong Yi, will this bro get banned again? Wu Ziqing, no. Zhong Yi, really? Wu Ziqing, I'm here. Zhong Yi felt relieved when he read her words, but not because he was worried that he would get banned again, since it did not bother him even if he were banned. What was most comforting to him was old Wu's unconditional support for him, no matter the situation. After messing up so badly, if it were anyone else's girlfriend, even if they didn't get angry, they would still have something to say about it, right? Besides, no matter how you looked at it, Zhong Yi leading a group of people and scolding others was also not commendable behavior, yet Wu Ziqing did not even blame him. Something happened? Then they would settle it. She unconditionally sided with him and respected all of Zhong Yi's choices. What was so good about Wu Ziqing? This was what was so good about her. Zhong Yi had a mind of his own even though it did not reflect in the way he spoke. Whatever Zhong Yi thought was the right thing to do, no matter how others tried to convince him to not do or made him guarantee to not do it, he would always end up doing the exact opposite of what they told him or made him promise not to. This was because he had his own way of approaching a situation and followed a set of guiding principles for his decisions. With such wonderful and distinct traits, his way of doing things was destined to be very different. So old Wu being authoritative yet not showing it, a gentle woman who knew how to respect others, made her very attractive to him. So did you still need to ask? If Zhong Yi listed out the three greatest virtues of Wu Ziqing that he liked most, then without a second thought, Zhong Yi would surely rank them as follows. 1. Large breasts. 2. Large breasts. 3. Large breasts. Chapter 571 A new job arrives. In the following few days. The Peking University incident was getting increasingly worse. Although the television media tried to do damage control of any negative broadcasts of the incident, with some television stations not even mentioning a word of it and some stations glossing over the details, but with this incident being such a serious and unprecedented one, it was of course impossible to totally cover it up. At least on the internet, it was still actively discussed everywhere. It had already been a few days since the incident happened at Peking University's Centennial Hall, but whenever it was brought up, it still attracted heated debates from everyone. Support Zhong Yi. Count me in. Face smacking Zhong showed his prowess. Support teacher Zhong's three central themes to patriotism. F asterisk asterisk K, it's already been several days, why is everyone still talking about it? This is all I've been seeing on the internet for the past few days. Is there nothing better to talk about than this? If you all have the time, why not send me some erotic pictures instead? 
that is the more important thing that we should be doing. We have to sort our priorities well, comrades. The next morning. Zhong Yi woke up and was fumbling around in his bed trying to light a cigarette to kickstart himself, but when he remembered that, World No Tobacco Day was just around the corner, his previous world's World No Tobacco Day was on a different date to this world's, and with the increased airing of those gross, quit-smoking, public service commercials recently, just the thought of them had made him lose the desire to smoke. He threw aside the cigarettes and yawned lazily. Leaning against the headboard, he took out his phone to check on Weibo to see what the netizens were discussing. There are still people who are scolding me. Oh, there are more people who support me. Zhong Yi browsed through everyone's comments and was suddenly delighted when he saw a group of his fans giving him yet another nickname, Speech Demon. What kind of nickname was that? Did they have to make it sound so terrible? Suddenly, he received a call from the Eastern Publishing Firm. There was a feminine voice at the other end. It was the editor of the publishing house, Li Mai, who had been to Zhong Yi's house before. Teacher Zhong, it's me, little Li. Are you still sleeping? Zhong Yi sat up and chuckled. No, I just woke up. Li Mai said, your novel Legend of Wukong will be on sale at all major bookstores starting from today. Naturally, Zhong Yi knew about this matter. How are the sales figures? I'm at books building right now, but the exact sales figure has not been tallied yet since they have only just opened for business a short while ago. From my on-site observation, I can only make an estimation, but in any case, the dozen or so youngsters walking past the shelf where your novel was displayed seem to have come here specially for your legend of Wukong. There were some people who bought it immediately without even browsing through the book, while there were also some others who read it in the store. The display area is already surrounded by quite a lot of people now. That's not bad. It's only because it is your book. Haha, <laughs> you've worked hard. Come to my place if you are free. My mom keeps nagging for you to come over. Sure, sure, I miss auntie too. Teacher Jong, I'll go busy myself with work for now. I was just getting someone to communicate with the staff of Books Building and the other major retail outlets. Since you have entrusted the copyrights of Ghost Blows Out the Light, Zhong Yi's compilation, and those fairy tale stories to us, we're thinking of setting up an exclusive display counter for you because the second print of the books is almost ready. With so many people coming to buy your books, it will be quite convenient for them to find your books. All right, you've worked hard. Listen to what you're saying. This is part of my job. Li Mai's tone was a joyful one. As she was the one who won the copyright for Legend of Wukong from Zhong Yi by fending off other major publishers, Li Mai's reputation in the industry grew overnight. Her current task was to handle publishing matters for Legend of Wukong, or to be more precise, she was Zhong Yi's assigned editor now. Books like Ghost Blows Out the Light and his other books came under her charge. Li Mai would handle him on a one on one basis and need not deal with any other authors. She would only need to be responsible for Zhong Yi, a decision made by the publisher's upper management. Since Zhong Yi was the type of author who could write anything and still have a bestseller, it was only natural he be accorded such special treatment. After the call ended, Zhong Yi wanted to know how he was doing in the celebrity rankings. Although the Peking University incident caused a lot of controversy and he received a lot of criticism over it, there were still a lot of people who supported him. As such, he felt that it would gain him quite a bit of fame. As a result, he checked on his ranking. The celebrity rankings index was updated. Next page. Next page. See list celebrities, 1. Xu Yu. 2. John Yi. 3. Chen Fanghua as expected, his ranking rose as his popularity score surged. Just a few days ago, after John Yi proved the mathematical conjecture, his popularity soared and that pushed his celebrity rankings placing to the front of the C-list. At that time, he was still ranked 4th or 5th place on the C-list celebrity rankings due to fluctuations, but today, he had reached 2nd place. Importantly, as the rankings moved closer to the top of the index, it became harder to move up since the popularity scores between each place increased exponentially. As the number of people lessened, the gap would widen. Thus, even if Zhong Yi had only risen to second place from fourth or fifth place, the gain in his popularity score was in actual fact very large. He was finally in second place, so that meant that Zhong Yi only needed to move up one more spot.
and then squeeze past the last rank of the B-listers by overtaking that celebrity's popularity score. He could end up being well ahead of completing his goal of becoming a B-list celebrity which he had set earlier this year. He was just a step away. He was really just a step away now. Of course, even though it was just a step away based on the rankings, if Zhong Yi analyzed the popularity score needed to move ahead, then he was still far behind. In the B-list celebrity rankings, which of these artists were not people who were well known to all in the country? Even the lowest ranked B-list celebrity would not be a pushover. That was why Zhong Yi was not blindly optimistic about his chances. He knew that there was a long road ahead and it would not be easy, especially since he was taking an unusual route to his goals. For others who were born with it, he would need to work a hundred or thousand times harder to achieve it. Out in the living room, his mom shouted for him. Son. Yes. Wake up. It's time for dinner. Coming. Zhong Yi went to wash up before sitting down at the dining table with his parents. Mom peeled an egg and then gave it to him. Here, for you. Thanks mom. Zhong Yi took it and ate it. His father's eyes narrowed as he said, he's already an adult and you're still peeling eggs for him? Why can't he peel it for himself? All these years and you have never peeled any for me. His mother rolled her eyes and said, my son is an associate professor now, so of course he gets special treatment. Zhong Yi said in amusement, don't mind, dad. Let me peel for you, let me peel for you. When his father took the egg from his son, he nodded and said, that's more like it. He then opened his mouth to swallow it before asking, how's work these days? Any job offers? His mother switched on the television. John Yi responded, nothing yet. His mother cocked her head. Why not? No one contacted you yet? John Yi threw his hands up. Yes. It's already been a few days, but there's been nothing at all. Hey, these bunch of people have eyes, but cannot recognize Mount Tai. His mother said unhappily, in the past, there were always companies who tried to headhunt you, wanting you for this or that, but now that you've gotten more famous, they don't come looking for you anymore. Son, is the Peking University incident causing this? Are they going to ban you again? That can't be. Didn't your new novel go on sale today? I still saw your brain gold advertisement last night and it wasn't banned. His father said, after creating such a big mess, he is already very lucky to not get banned. Why would you think that anyone from the television stations would come to find him? Those people are probably in a wait-and-see mood at the moment. Indeed, Zhong Yi could also see this. In fact, because the speech had helped to increase his popularity quite a bit and gained him a number of new fans, he also did not get banned but was only suspended from teaching. Looking at it on the surface, it did not affect him much and even seemed like he was thriving as he continued doing whatever he wanted. But actually, it was not as simple as it looked. After all, the incident had involved some sensitive issues and no one would know whether Zhong Yi would really escape any punishments. He might be safe today but if a television station invited him to host a new program today, and the authorities clamped down on him the next day, then the television station would definitely have wasted their resources on him. It might even implicate them somehow. So, to many people right now, Zhong Yi was a ticking time bomb who might suddenly explode at any moment. That was one reason. Another reason was Zhong Yi's short fuse. Once again, this Peking University incident had made more people aware of that. Even if there were no political reasons involved, Zhong Yi was still a ticking time bomb. No one even knew when or where he would explode and cause some disastrous results. And so, incorporating all these reasons, everyone had grave worries about him. There were no doubts about his abilities and no one could deny his capabilities. Everybody could recognize them. However, the most worrisome factor was his terrible temper. Only the most courageous television stations would ever think of recruiting Zhong Yi. This was the overall situation right now. Zhong Yi was in an awkward plight. On the internet, there were also plenty of people who were concerned about Zhong Yi's whereabouts. Where has teacher Zhong disappeared to for the past few days? Where did Zhong Yi go? Has he started on a new job yet? His classes have been suspended, so I can't even view Zhong Yi's lecture videos online anymore.
I've already read Legend of Wukong on the internet and Teacher Zhong has not had any other recent works, so why are there no updates on his activities? Wasn't he unbanned? Yeah, he was unbanned. Really, are there really no television stations that will take Teacher Zhong? What are the television stations thinking? Hurry up and sign Zhong Yi. Teacher Zhong has done so many programs and is proficient at being a host and program planner. Every one of his new programs had excellent ratings without fail, so what are you all still hesitating for? Even if you give him a salary of 8 million, you wouldn't be making a loss. So why haven't any of the television stations made a move yet? Foot, how unpopular can you get, Teacher Zhong? I hope that Zhong Yi will host a variety show this time, he's too humorous. Don't. I hope Teacher Zhong will continue to do an academic program like Lecture Room. I am anticipating these type of programs which can increase my knowledge. I prefer music programs. Countless netizens were enthusiastically anticipating Zhong Yi's next work. Meanwhile, at home. After waiting for some time now, Zhong Yi received an offer for an unexpected job. Chapter 572 To Help or Not to Help? Morning. With the World No Tobacco Day approaching, a news report was attracting extensive concern. The news came from Central TV's live broadcast studio. It was related to the new regulations of public service announcements. The authorities had passed several new regulations regarding PSAs. It stated very clearly on the document that public service announcements that brought awareness to the adverse effects of smoking on television's commercials were banned from using real human organs as examples. There were also three or four similar new regulations along these lines. When this direct order was released, Central TV along with other provincial and satellite channel were not greatly affected, since they were more or less able to conform to the new regulations. With only some slight adjustment and modification of the images based on the new policies, it would be sufficient to meet the new standards. But Beijing Television and some other BTV provincial channels would be greatly affected. Beijing Television's quit smoking public service ad would directly get axed. Of the World No Tobacco Day advertisements of two other provincial channels under Beijing Television Station, one would get axed, while the other had still not passed the censorship check. A lot of money used for the production fees were wasted, resulting in a heavy loss. The netizens were puzzled. It is so strict. Why did they suddenly come up with such a policy? Yeah, PSAs are not for profit anyway and are usually funded out of the television station's own pocket. If they are being so restrictive, won't the television station suffer? Don't you all know that some time ago a non profit organization had protested the PSAs shown on television for displaying? Unsuitable images? Seems like it happened at the end of last year. A commercial depicted the blackened lung of a smoker, who was suffering from advanced stage lung cancer, in an operating room being cut open. A survey showed that most audiences could not accept such images, especially the juveniles and non smokers. Actually, quit smoking advertisements were primarily targeted at smokers, but because television broadcasts were unable to filter this to the target groups, it ended with the non-smokers and juveniles getting terrified before the smokers could get the message. Images of an overly gory and bloody scene must be controlled so as to cover all aspects of the viewer's comfort. So that's why. That is true. I was watching the Beijing television commercial that showed the blackened lungs just yesterday. It wasn't actually frightening since I have seen it so many times. Quit smoking commercials are always more or less the same, always giving statistics on the number of fatalities, infertility, black lungs, and all that. I get bored just watching them, since this has no effect on a hardcore smoker. I've seen my fair share of such commercials and am already immune to them. Such images no longer scare me into quitting. If they have the time to show those commercials, they might as well show other types of commercials. Right, the current quit smoking advertisements are pretty much the same. Few years ago, I felt uncomfortable when I saw it for the first time and even quit smoking for a few months, but after watching it more often, it became pointless and meaningless with no value added. Beijing television station will have a headache because of this. The World No Tobacco Day is tomorrow, so let's see how they're going to change it. Tomorrow? It'll be too late. If they don't make it in time, won't they incur a fine? The current policies are very strict. 
When it comes to public service, the television stations are expected to meet a minimum requirement, but if they don't, they get fined a hefty amount. At another place. At home. While Zhong Yi and his parents were chatting, a call from Hu Fei arrived. Little Zhong, it's me, Hu Fei said. Zhong Yi replied, Hey, brother Hu, what's the matter? Hu Fei spoke hesitatingly, about that, I have something to discuss with you. Just be direct. Zhong Yi took the remote control and lowered the television's volume. Beside him, his parents also stopped talking. Hu Fei said, It's not convenient to speak over the phone, let's meet up and talk. Sure, where do you want to meet? Zhong Yi agreed. He had no hesitation when it came to his friends and benefactors. Hu Fei considered for a moment before carefully saying, You're almost a B list celebrity now, so I think it's a little inconvenient for you to be out in public since you might get spotted by your fans. Why don't you come over to Beijing television station instead? You know, since you left, you have not come back for a visit yet. Besides, Dafei, Xiao Lu, and the others are all thinking about you. Why don't you come over and we'll catch up, all right? Anyways, you do not have a job currently, so shouldn't you have time? Zhong Yi blinked, roughly understanding what was going on. Without giving him a chance to speak, Hu Fei immediately said, Ha, huh, it's settled. Send me a message when you're almost there. I will be waiting for you. Bye. The call ended before he could say anything. Zhong Yi was a little speechless. He turned to the side and said, Dad, Mom, I'll be heading to Beijing television station for a while. His mother stared at him and said, Beijing television station? Why are you still going there? Hi, a friend has something to discuss with me. Maybe he needs my help on something. Zhong Yi was already changing his clothes. I won't be having lunch at home then. His mother said unhappily, you were fired and thrown out by them last time, but now that there's something they need your help for, you'll go at their beck and call? Have you forgotten about the matter regarding Wang Shuaixin? It was all that Wang Shuaixin's fault that his son misbehaved in the office and even started a fight. He kept making things difficult for you and even corruptedly handled matters. Father Wei who was such a nice fellow was even driven to death by him. When you upheld justice, the television station ended up firing you instead. How is that fair? I am so angry just bringing this matter up. Zhong Yi said, Aya, Wang Shuaixin has already been sentenced anyway. The television station fired me not because I was Ro. Ing to uphold justice, but because I made trouble during the live broadcast. His mother said angrily, you're still speaking up for them? Zhong Yi smiled dryly. I wasn't speaking up for them. At that time I was fired, I was also unhappy about it, but I understand the television station's decision. My way of doing things was somewhat inappropriate. You damned kid, his mother said in anger. Zhong Yi quickly soothed her, Mom, don't be angry, don't be angry. I know what what I'm doing. His mother said, what do you know? His father started to speak up, okay, let our son settle his own matters. What are you getting so worried for? Zhong Yi feelings for Beijing television station were so complicated that even he could not explain it. Having worked for some time now in the industry, the worst relationship he had was with Beijing television station. When he was there, he was involved in a fight, detained at a police station, scolded his leaders, made trouble during a live broadcast, and was finally fired by them. If it were anyone else, they would surely not have fond memories of this place. Zhong Yi also had a similar experience but the difference was that he held a deep and special appreciation for the television station. First, as someone born and bred in Beijing, not only did he grow up watching Beijing television, he also watched BTV Arts Channel, BTV Sports Channel, BTV Science and Education Channel as well as other local provincial channels which did not broadcast to other provinces. These kind of feelings were indescribable. Second, this was the place that nurtured him and where he had gained his first achievements. Hu Fei was the one who invited him to join them and gave him the chance to make his first appearance on TV. Having hosted a program like Lecture Room, which turned out to be the crucial step in helping him become popular, he could not just disregard the kindness Hu Fei had shown to him. When his mother finished speaking, Zhong Yi had not expected that he would actually speak up for Beijing television station. After thinking over for a while, he realized that he had already let bygones be bygones. 
Half an hour later. Beijing Television Station Building. Zhang Yi parked his car in the parking lot and got out, wearing his sunglasses. Zhang Yi walked right up to the building's front entrance, then looked up to see the once familiar office building before walking in with big strides. In the lobby, someone had noticed him. A. Hey. This person looks quite familiar. Hey yo. Could that be Zhang Yi? It is Zhang Yi. It really is Zhang Yi. What is teacher Zhang doing here? Is he here for a program's guest role? Or is he here to do a program? I didn't hear about this. Recently, teacher Zhang has been on the cusp of the news, but there were no rumors of him having signed with any television stations. I suppose everyone is still observing the situation before making any moves? Without standing on ceremony, Zhang Yi made himself comfortable and sat down on the sofa in the lobby's resting area. He casually picked up a copy of a magazine while waiting. A youth waved at him from a distance. Teacher Zhang, long time no see. Zhang Yi looked over to the person and found him quite familiar looking, but he was unable to recall his name. He only remembered that he was a staff member of a program team from one of the bigger departments. Hello. Teacher Zhang, you getting more and more handsome. Teacher Zhang, do you still remember me? You appearing here today, does it mean that you're returning to the station? Some staff members who had crossed paths with Zhang Yi before but weren't particularly close to him went up to greet him enthusiastically. Two reporters from the BTV News Channel hurried over when they heard he was here. They were trying very hard to fish for some first-hand information from him. Because even fools knew that Zhang Yi couldn't have appeared here without reason, especially since there were some very unhappy dealings between Zhang Yi and Beijing television station before. Everyone was curious and thought of many possibilities of his return with their rich imagination as they continued asking him for an answer. At this moment, Hu Fei arrived. There was a youth with beard stubble, looking quite lethargic, who came along with Hu Fei. When Hu Fei saw so many people crowding around Zhong Yi, he said, Make way, please make way. Then he casually greeted Zhong Yi and soon the three of them went upstairs from another side of the building. See, you are still very popular. Even after you left Beijing television station for such a long time, everyone is still thinking about you. Zhang Yi could feel that he implied more than that and chuckled, Brother Hu, just tell me directly what you wish to say. Hu Fei decided not to beat around the bush any longer, so he introduced the person on his left. This is Sun Han. He's our station's manager of public service ads and just started work last year. He's also a son of one of my old colleagues. Sun Han reached out his hand and said, I've heard a lot about you. Zhang Yi shook hands with him and said, Nice to meet you. Hu Fei, seemingly looking a little embarrassed, said, I asked you here because of the matter of our public service announcement. I suppose you have already seen the morning news. This time, the station's public service ads have all been axed, but since tomorrow is the World No Tobacco Day. The new public service ad has to be approved by tomorrow. This is very urgent and Little Sun's side is unable to come up with any ideas. After their department deliberated for a long time, they still couldn't settle on a basic concept as there was no idea they could come up with at all. Sun Han rubbed his beard stubble and said, The past few days have worried me to death. When the new policies were passed so suddenly without warning and all our advertisements had to be withdrawn, it left us with no backup plans. Teacher Zhong, you are an alumnus of the station and have even helped out on the Save Electricity public service ad before. Surely you know that in our department, we are not professional creatives. The department was set up two years ago and our main responsibilities cover coordination work, funding, and supervising, while most of our production work is outsourced to external advertising companies. He spent a long time highlighting his difficulties. Zhang Yi already guessed that it was this matter before he came over, so he asked, then why didn't you get an advertising company to do it? None of them would accept the job, Sun Han said, looking very worried. After we received the notifications at around 6 or 7 a.m. this morning, we immediately contacted the advertising companies to reshoot more World No Tobacco Day PSAs to replace the ones that were axed. If they couldn't do a full production, we were willing to settle for a concept and work on it on our own. However, as we did not have enough funds left due to having spent most of it on those previous quit-smoking advertisements, 
we ended up having apply for additional funding from the leader. But while some of the advertising companies rejected the job due to money issues, most of them rejected it due to the urgent timeline of the project. They felt that it was too tight for them to complete the project within a day and they would need at least three days to plan and produce it instead, but three days? Three days later, the World No Tobacco Day would have already passed by then. As for buying a concept, after asking some of these companies, they also told us that they wouldn't be able to give us any as there was a high demand for such quit smoking public service ads. So having sold them to the other bidders, there were no concepts left to sell to us. As they spoke, the three men had reached the fifth floor. John Yi asked, why don't you just submit a simple advertisement which can meet the regulations first? Sun Han helplessly said, that won't work since it would never get passed at the approval stage. Besides, the station won't agree to it since a public service announcement also showcases the quality of a television station. Although Beijing Television Station is not one the highest rated in the industry, it is still among the top television stations. We can't just bumble our way through it. Besides, the new policies were only handed down recently. I'm afraid we couldn't fool them even if we wanted. Who knows? If we did that, we might get made an example out of as the first warning to others. John Yi kept silent. Sun Han looked at him and said, anyways, that's what the situation is like. Our time is short and we are really at our wit's end now. When we asked several advertising industry insiders and the staff in our public service announcement department, all of them highly recommended a person to me, you, teacher Zhong. Zhong Yi glanced at him and said, we have to create a 15 to 20 second public service ad within a day when there isn't much money, manpower, or concepts to begin with. If you are asking for a sloppy end product, that might still be possible, but if you want a well-polished and detailed announcement that also has elements of creativity, then that is basically an unrealistic target. Sun Han said in a serious tone, I know this matter is very difficult, but I am left with no choice. I could only think of getting Uncle Hu to ask for your help. Although I have not been working in the industry for a long time, I still know of your name in the advertising industry. Every single one of your creations, like the Save Electricity commercial, I'll Speak for Myself, promotional teaser, and the Brain Gold commercial, is classic textbook material in the advertising industry. There is no one else who can do except you. Hu Fei chipped in a word for Sun Han, Little Zhong, I know that the station had been too harsh on you the last time. But at that critical time, the station was also forced to make a decision they did not want to make. I believe you know the station might face a great loss in reputation and also be fined heavily. Don't leave us in a lurch. Take it as giving face to me by helping us out. Besides, since your reputation in the media has been suffering a little recently with so many negative reports of you, if you get involved with a PSA, you will surely able to turn the tide a little. So if you have any other requests, just speak. Sun Han added, I can assure you that you will not be working for nothing. The fees are negotiable. As long as you can help the station tide over this crisis, I believe the fees. Zhong Yi waved his hands and interrupted him. I don't want any money. Sun Han was a little taken aback. Doesn't want money? He said, but. Hu Fei interjected, listen to little Zhong. If you want my help, it's not impossible. Zhong Yi said, but I have a request. Sun Han immediately answered, please speak. Zhong Yi said, I will call the shots on the overall planning for this project, including the delegation of manpower and use of funding. Everything will be decided by me, that is my only request. Sun Han promised, rest assured of this. You are free to command everyone in our department including me. Zhong Yi nodded. All right then. Sun Han asked, then, it's settled? I will accept this task. Let's enjoy working together. Zhong Yi shook hands once again. Sun Han heaved a sigh of relief, giving an excited handshake. With you leading us, we will certainly not have any worries anymore. Thank you so much, Teacher Zhong. You have really been a great help this time. Zhong Yi shook his head and said, I cannot promise that I will be able to help for sure, since the time given is really too short. Hu Fei patted Zhong Yi's shoulder and said, however it turns out, thanks little Zhong. Zhong Yi laughed. You're welcome. Since brother who has spoken, 
I will definitely do my best to complete it even if I have to climb a mountain of swords or dive into a sea of flames. I like what you said. Hu Fei said, in any case, I owe you one now. Zhong Yi smirked. Come on, with our relationship, do you still need to say that? So where will we be working? There's not much time left. Let's get started right away. Sun Han led the way. Over here, this way. Come with me. Hu Fei stayed where he stood and said, you guys go ahead. I'm only here to link the both of you up. Now that my task is completed, I'll be leaving. Chapter 573 The Most Frightening, Quit Smoking Advertisement in History At the Television Station Fifth Floor, Public Service Announcement Department Sun Han pushed open the door to the office and proclaimed, All right everyone, please stop what you are doing for now. I have invited someone with authority in the industry to assist us on the project for the Quit Smoking Public Service ad. Saying that, he gestured to the person beside him. I don't suppose teacher Zhong needs any introduction, right? You all should know him. Before we get started, I need to inform everyone that teacher Zhong is here to help out in a private capacity and will not receive any compensation. This ad's planning will entirely be handled by teacher Zhong. Before tomorrow's ad approval deadline, every one of us in the ad department will follow teacher Zhong's instructions. Any questions? No. Teacher Zhong? Great. Teacher Zhong's ads are well known throughout the country. Other than Sun Han, who was the manager, the department had four other people. An old man in his late fifties sat to the left, while a girl who looked to be around 18 or 19 years old sat on the right. It was hard to tell whether she was an employee of the television station or just an intern since she looked so young. In addition, there was a youth wearing a face mask sitting down and coughing intermittently, probably because of the flu. Finally, the remaining member of the team had a cast around his arm. He looked he had suffered a fracture. When Zhong Yi saw this lineup, he suddenly felt like he had been thrown into the situation without knowing anything beforehand. Old. Young. Sick. Crippled. What an awesome quartet. Zhong Yi asked, it's just the few of us. Sun Han felt a bit embarrassed and said, our department's setup is just this, but I've already applied for additional manpower from management. There will be others from the advertising department coming over later to help out. Zhong Yi, left with no choice, said, time and tide wait for no man. Let's get started. Sun Han said, right, let's show teacher Zhong our previous ads first. It's right here. The intern girl brought over the files and said, these are the ads that got axed. Zhong Yi scanned through the footage and said, I already know the standards that we have to adhere to. Basically, we cannot show real organs or overly frightening illustrations. What about the duration required for the ad? The old man replied, the required duration is 15 seconds. Zhong Yi asked again, what is the desired effect it must achieve? Sun Han hesitated. Since it is a quit smoking PSA, it should certainly make people feel scared. It can only achieve its objectives as a quit smoking PSA if people are truly scared from the bottoms of their hearts. However, the problem we have now is that the new policies do not allow for those traditional ideas that everyone had always been using. The even older ways, such as showing statistics of death rates due to smoking, won't be effective in spreading the message at all if they're not supported by images. Besides, that method is also outdated, so that's why we're having a difficult time handling this quit smoking PSA. On top of that, we even have only one day left to complete it. We. Zhong Yi said, scaring people? We do not necessarily have to resort to blood and gore or use real imagery or blackened lungs. Those visual tricks are the lowest form of scare tactics. When Sun Han noticed that Zhong Yi seemed to be forming some ideas, he hurriedly said, Teacher Zhong, I am not a professional in this field, so everything will be done according to your ideas. Just tell us what you need and we'll do it. The awesome quartet also nodded. At this moment, someone knocked on the door and came in. Little son, we're here to help out. Manager son, the head instructed me to come over. Manager little son, you needed help? I can help out until 3 p.m. Oh, Teacher Zhong? Why is Teacher Zhong here as well? Are you handing this advertisement now? Yo, Teacher Little Zhong? 
gradually, the colleagues from the other departments started to arrive. Approximately 11 people had come, clearly mobilized from their department's work groups. The head of Beijing television station was probably quite worried as well. Otherwise, there wouldn't have been so many staff members sent over to try to help save the situation. When they saw that Zhong Yi was here too, everyone was surprised for a moment and then had a clear understanding about the current situation. They found out that Beijing television station had turned to Zhong Yi for help to try to overcome the problem that they were currently facing. But those who had worked at the station last year all knew about the disagreements between these two parties, so they were still surprised that the station had actually invited Zhong Yi to help them out. Also, Zhong Yi had agreed to help them. However, Zhong Yi did not have the time to explain anything. He was here with only one purpose in mind. As he had promised his friend he would help out, he only wanted to make sure he could complete the task. He thought of nothing else. There was only a day's time. Without much funding. He couldn't go with traditional concepts. It couldn't have blood and gore. It must not scare the non smokers. Yet, the key was that it still had to be frightening? In John Yi's mind, he was racing through ideas as he filtered them with the conditions required. Very quickly, a classic quit smoking public service announcement from his previous world presented itself to him. It was ad shown on central TV from his previous world. At that time, compared to many other outstanding and creative quit smoking ads both locally and abroad, it was not the most humorous, nor was it the most interesting, and it did not even have a singular emphasis on creativeness or topic of interest about it. By analyzing the ad structure, it did not even seem to fall under the creative advertisement category. Overall, it was very dry and boring ad. But precisely because it was so simple, this quit smoking announcement that lasted for about a dozen seconds without even having a line of narration in it was regarded by most smokers in that previous world of his as the most frightening quit smoking PSA in history. Countless smokers were so scared by that advertisement that, ever since they had watched it, they never took another puff again. This advertisement had at that time caused countless discussions. This would be the one. It did not even need an outdoor shoot, it had low production fees, did not require much manpower, and was simple to produce. After comparing the dozens of quit smoking PSAs in his mind, Zhong Yi picked this advertisement without any hesitation. He stood up and quickly assigned tasks. I need two people. Get me at least a thousand cigarettes. Most of the cigarettes can just be the ordinary yellow filter type cigarette but I need a hundred that don't have any clear markings on the filter and should be a solid yellow. Ah? Solid color filter? So you mean cigarettes without words and branding on the filter? What did you mean by that? The first instruction had already left everyone unable to make heads or tails of it. Sun Han immediately said, Old Shu, Brother Hu, may I trouble the two of you in getting what teacher Zhong needs? Two staff members from another department said, Sure, since the head told us to come over to help out, we will follow your arrangements accordingly. It's best if the thousand cigarettes have no markings on the filters. All right, leave it to us. The two of them went off to get it done. Since they were both hardcore smokers, they knew exactly which brand of cigarettes to look for. John Yi continued, Next, I need royalty free background music so that I can use it as I please. The required music must sound gloomy, be slow, and feel sorrowful. A youth raised a hand and said, let me handle that. It's my specialty. Zhong Yi added, I will need at least 20 samples of background music. After you have gathered them all, come to me so that I can decide which to use. A middle-aged woman from the advertising department said, I'll help with that as well. As the office could not accommodate so many people, the two of them went off to do their task after getting it. Zhong Yi said hastily, reserve a recording location for me. As for the computer animation, design, and post-production equipment, get the preparations for those done as well. Everyone get back to their own respective working positions and make sure the tools are accessible at any time. Finally, the most important thing. I need a few of you who know 3D modeling, at least five of you, to help arrange these hundreds of cigarettes into the most realistic 3D model of the lung. Chapter 574 Unable to Finish? The tasks had been assigned accordingly. But everyone was still a little confused. Sun Han was a little taken aback. 
using cigarettes to make a 3D model? The old young sick injured group's comrade old said, and making a lung. Yes. Everyone please make the most of your time now, John Yi said. I have to say this beforehand, but whoever can work overtime today, please do so. Also, if there's no compelling reason, could the four of you from the public service announcement department stay overnight? I will be staying myself as well, so let's be prepared to work all the way till morning. This will be a difficult battle as we don't have much time until the deadline, so we can only sacrifice our rest and sleep. All right then. I'm fine with that. I will follow teacher Jong's instructions. The four of them all acknowledged the need to work overtime. His request for overtime was actually only directed towards the public service announcement department employees, as the others who came to help with the production still had their basic duties to fulfill at work and it was unfair to ask them to do the same. Soon after, everyone started getting busy in the office. Lungs? Using cigarettes to create a 3D model of lungs? No one understood John Yi's intent nor could they see what this advertisement would be about, but everyone executed their tasks accordingly as given by John Yi. If Sun Han or any other person had given the orders, it might have been possible that not everyone would have put in their full trust and simply followed the instructions. But it was who Zhong Yi stood before them. First was his reputation and fame as a calligrapher, advertiser, literature writer, world-class mathematician, etc., a whole host of titles to his name. Second, everyone knew he had a bad temper, even the newcomers to the television station felt intimidated. In the group of personnel which had come to help out, there were two people who had just joined the television station this year. When they started, Zhong Yi had already left the station. Even though they had not met or worked together before, they had still heard the countless stories concerning Zhong Yi. When he chased off a guest teacher during the lecture on the Three Kingdoms, his scolding of the leader, beating up the leader's son and creating trouble during a live broadcast. All of this led to his reputation preceding him. He was a legend to them. With a variety of other reasons, many people instinctively feared Zhong Yi, knowing that he would even scold their mothers if it came to such a point. Where's the machine? Where is it? Don't gather around here. It's too crowded. Old Jew, bring the guys and go to table three to work. Someone get me a pen. Mine's out of ink. The office was filled with the sounds of people working. Zhong Yi did not slack off either. He got Sun Han to bring him to the soundproofed recording studio where the ad would be filmed. By rights, the studio was not booked for the public service announcement department today, but after getting special approval from the station, Zhong Yi brought along his team to claim the recording studio for his own use after some haggling. Although the props were not ready yet, he had already begun outlining the settings as he took a notepad and pen out to do the storyboarding. He opened up the game ring to buy a memory search capsule and ate it to speedily find the original ad from his previous world. When he opened his eyes again, Zhong Yi immediately proceeded to draft the storyboard. He divided it into five key panels, sketching it out on the notepad. It was drawn very simply and crudely and looked like something that only Zhong Yi himself would understand. Every panel was labeled with some numbers, like time durations and other notes. All of this information would help him to better plan his production work. Since it was not the first time he was involved in advertisement production, he was familiar with all the tasks and planning involved. As such, he appeared very professional in handling his work. Teacher Zhong, does this background look suitable? That part won't do. Use a computer to create the background instead. I need it to look gloomier. Get them ready and don't forget the smoke effects that need to be composite in. I need more variations of the smoke effects too. This is what both of you specialize in, right? Okay, I will tell you in detail how the smoke should look like. It has to appear wispy, a little lighter, not too concentrated. In the blink of an eye, it was already time for lunch. Some of them went downstairs to eat lunch while Zhong Yi and many others continued to do their work in the office. When Sun Han saw this, he got someone to order takeout to be delivered over so that everyone could eat. Afternoon. They finally got their hands on all the cigarettes. Unpack them. Unpack everything. Place them one by one into this box. Zhong Yi had to split his focus, sometimes checking on the progress at the fifth floor office, and at other times, 
heading to the recording studio to supervise the prop modeling. Eventually, the background music was finished and ready. Two staff members brought three melancholic sounding arrangements for Zhong Yi to listen to. But after listening to them, he rejected them all and said, These aren't acceptable. I've already said I want at least 20 pieces of music to pick from. Please try a little harder. I need the music to be even slower. The female staff said, But there are only these few music pieces in the library that fit the requirements you mentioned. Zhong Yi said, Then don't get them from the library. He looked at Sun Han and said, Let the relevant departments in the station help out with this. Compose a piece of suitable music that we can use. Sun Han was already sweating from fatigue. All right, I will try my best to get them to do so. Zhong Yi quickly told him, Don't try your best. You need to get it done no matter what. The ad will be a standalone piece and won't involve any narration, so I don't think I need to highlight the importance of the background music. The music will unite the whole ad and set its tone. It is the most important piece of the finished product, so we can't mess this up. Tell the station that we need some technical people to help us out on this. When you find them, let them come look for me. I will explain the requirements in detail to them. If even they can't do it, then we will pay an external company to get it done. Seeing Zhong Yi be so serious, Sun Han also straightened up. Okay, leave it to me. Zhong Yi's attitude had infected the others and made everyone feel very tense. This was who Zhong Yi was. No matter what the issue was, whether it was his own problem or a problem he promised to help someone else with, he would not prioritize one over the other. He was the type of person who would do his best at whatever he did. This attitude of seeking perfection was rooted in his fundamentals since he debuted. He did not like to fool others, and had his own understanding and pursuits, especially when it came to art. Everything else could be discounted, but this was not one of them. One hour. Three hours. Five hours. It was already evening and time to clock out. A large group of the staff from the other advertising department had already left. From 3 p.m. in the afternoon until 7 p.m. now, people had been gradually leaving and only a handful had voluntarily stayed behind to help out. It was only because Sun Han had spent all day talking and persuading many of them that they did not all leave at once. But this was clearly not a good long-term plan. At around 8 or 9 p.m. at night, many of the television station's departments had already switched off their lights and left work. The five or six people from the other departments who had stayed behind to help out could no longer endure it. After working on such a high-tension job with a tight deadline for hours on end, who could endure it? They left as well. Only Zhong Yi, Sun Han, and his team of the Awesome Quartet stayed behind. Zhong Yi was not distracted by any of these issues as he continued to work on the 3D lung model which had already taken shape. He tweaked it a little here and there but was still unsatisfied with how it looked. It didn't seem right. It just didn't feel right. The model was very similar to the one that was shown in the PSA from his previous world. The shape looked almost the same but it somehow lacked the same feel. This was a model of a pair of lungs that were made from thousands of cigarettes stacked together, but it obviously did not portray the feel of what lungs were like. Zhong Yi turned it around, looking at it from different angles, and even used a camera to test shots of it from multiple perspectives, but it still did not seem right. Finally, Zhong Yi discovered the problem. There was something wrong with the depth layering. This lungs arrangement looked too precise from the front. The cigarettes displayed at the front of the lung should have been unevenly layered, but right now it was just a flat surface. It had lost the essence of a three-dimensional object. That's why it did not have the feel of a lung. They were done for. A problem cropped up. Zhong Yi took a deep breath and couldn't help admitting that this was a very big error on his part. He had thought too simply of it when he conveyed the requirements to the modelers. As it took time for the model to be assembled, Zhong Yi hadn't noticed this problem earlier. But it seemed like it was too late now as the cigarettes used for modeling the lungs were fixed one by one onto a frame with glue. This made it almost impossible to do any modifications to it now as the glue had already dried, and the cigarettes were all solidly in place. Sun Han looked at him and asked, what's the matter? The employee with the flu said, teacher Zhong, what happened? Zhong Yi did not look too good as he explained, there's a flaw in the design. 
We can't use this prop anymore. We have to remake it. This demonstrated how difficult it was to create an advertisement, because the tasks thought to be simple and easy to execute would sometimes turn out to be utterly difficult. It would have to be done all over again, and sometimes, it wasn't even as simple as redoing it once. Old, ah. Uh, young, what? Sick, this, this looks quite good though. Injured, yeah, what's wrong with this? The four of them were dumbfounded. It was getting so late already. Midnight was soon approaching. They had spent the entire morning and afternoon rushing, but now it looked like their hard work for the entire day had gone to waste. John Yi said, we will redo this. Everyone was in despair now. They knew it was over, that this task would not be completed on time. A day was indeed not enough. Up until now, they still did not know what the ad would look like. But more importantly, the only prop to be used for the ad was even facing a design flaw? Wasn't this adding fuel to fire? Sunhan also blanched. The modelers have already left. HH how will we be able to remake this now? Besides, we've run out of cigarettes too. We wasted quite a lot of them when we were creating this model. Why don't we just make do and use this to finish our task first? Zhong Yi shook his head and said, that won't do. Even if we use this model for the shoot, it won't have the desired effect. I know everyone is tired, but let's endure a little more. The intern girl clenched her teeth and said, I'll go get the cigarettes. I know this brand and I've seen it at the 24-hour convenience store downstairs. The other staff members meanwhile continued busying themselves with work but it was obvious they had also felt the despair because of this problem, and were no longer holding out much hope for the project. So many of them had spent the entire day and night to make this model of the lungs, but there were only a few of them left now, and they felt totally drained and tired. Further, the modelers had left the office as well, so what else could they do? They couldn't even finish if they pulled an all-nighter, right? Chapter 575 Tempting Fate At midnight, the digital clock in the recording studio beeped to signal the time. The cigarettes that were meant for the reconstruction of the model were brought back to the office as well. The awesome quartet had just started unpacking the cigarettes from their packs. Without the manpower from the morning and afternoon to help out, even the simple task of opening the packs to take the cigarettes out had taken them a long time to do. The more packs they opened, the more dispirited and tired they became. Zhong Yi took a sick from the pile. Sun Han lighted it for him then took one for himself as well. At this time, Sun Han's phone rang. He answered the call and said, Hello, Brother Chen, has it been recorded already? All right, all right. Thanks, you guys, okay, okay. I'll definitely treat everyone to a meal, definitely. Zhong Yi asked, the background music is complete? Sun Han used the software in the recording studio to retrieve the music files. Two of my friends from the station completed it after working overtime. There. I've received the files. Have a listen and see if they're all right. I think they've created them according to your requirements. There were a total of three pieces of background music. When Zhong Yi heard the first one, he rejected it. When he heard the second piece, his eyes narrowed and he said, Good, this will be the one. I don't need to listen to the third one anymore. Sun Han heaved a sigh of relief. That's good then, at least we have completed one task, but the others. Zhong Yi and Sun Han turned their heads and looked over to the few of them at the other side opening cigarette packs and taking out cigarettes. The oldest one of them was already lying down horizontally across a few chairs. The injured one with a cast was also reclining in a chair and had fallen asleep while nodding his head, looking like he would fall of the chair at any time. Sun Han said, I'll wake them up. Forget it. Zhong Yi stopped him and looked at the others. Everyone has been battling hard for more than 12 hours now. Even if they were iron men, they wouldn't be able to bear it. If they're tired, just let them rest. The staff member who had the flu clutched his forehead and said, Brother Sun, Teacher Zhong, I can't take it anymore too. I'm sick and feel crazy dizzy. He stood up to excuse himself. He looked like he wasn't even unable to stand properly. The intern girl was also at her limits, her eyelids drooping as she tried to battle her fatigue. If they had been able to finish up everything just now, they might have been able to hang on a little more. 
but the problem now was that there was an issue with the prop and they were only several hours away from the morning deadline. They knew they couldn't make it in time. Exhaling their last breath of hope, their spirits were crushed as weariness took over completely. Zhong Yi said calmly, go and rest. The girl said, I will just nap for half an hour. Then I'll be able to work again. Zhong Yi looked at Sun Han who was also trying to hold out and told him, you too. Go and rest. What about you? Sun Han did not move. Zhong Yi stamped on and extinguished his cigarette, then said, don't worry about me. I once recorded a program for more than 12 hours without stopping, so don't try to keep up with me like this. Sun Han waved his hands and said, that won't do. If you aren't going to rest, then I'll stay up together with you. Just let me know whatever you need me to help you with. It was already quite unsuitable that I called you to help us with this in the first place, so how could I leave you to work while I sleep? That doesn't make sense. He was about to light another cigarette to wake himself up a little more. Don't smoke anymore. Zhong Yi said without explaining. You can go and nap for half an hour as well. I can see that you're feeling dizzy too. If you try to help out with the modeling, which requires steady hands, it'll be more troublesome if you're feeling dizzy. You won't be able to do much in your state, so go on and rest. I will wake you up in a bit. Sun Han thought over the suggestion and could only reply, then, all right, I'll get 30 minutes of shut eye. Remember to wake us up. Zhong Yi nodded. Sun Han then found a corner and pulled over a few chairs, placing them close together before lying down on them. He had only closed his eyes for a few seconds before he started snoring. He was that tired. When Zhong Yi saw they had all fallen asleep, he went over to the intern girl to cover her with a jacket, afraid she would catch a cold. Although he said that he would wake them up in 30 minutes, he wasn't actually planning on doing so. They were already at their limits, whether it be physically or technically. Whatever work there was left, he was better off doing himself. He would just do whatever he could since he was used to working overtime anyway, and still had the strength to go on. Let's get started then. Zhong Yi walked over to the model frame and started to affix the cigarettes one by one. The previous design flaw had taught him a lesson and he already knew what the problem was, so he was sure that he wouldn't make the same mistake again. And so, using the flawed model as a guide, Zhong Yi started stacking up and affixing the cigarettes to a new frame again. It looked almost the same as the earlier model, except that it had a layering effect in the depth of the cigarettes. For example, the bottom of the lungs shouldn't stick out as much compared to the middle. With this added depth, it made the model appear three-dimensional. Even though it was simple to explain, when it came to making the model, it was still a very complex operation. His hands needed to be very steady to make sure the cigarette stuck well on the first try. Once the glue dried, there was no way to move it again. When that was done, he had to put another cigarette on top of the other. He did every step carefully. One sig. Ten sigs. A hundred sigs. Again and again. Two hours passed. Sun Han and the others were all sound asleep. Two of them were even snoring loudly, creating quite a good rhythm between themselves. At 2 a.m. in the morning, Zhong Yi suddenly felt lightheaded and started seeing spots in his vision. His hand was shaking so badly that a cigarette he was holding dropped to the floor. He also lost his balance for a second. He was at his limits. He could not hang on any longer. Zhong Yi quickly drank a sip of water as his face turned pale. What should he do? There was no time left, but should he just give up like that? Just throw it aside so it would be out of his hands? How could he do that? If he hadn't promised them, it wouldn't have mattered to him. But he had already promised Hu Fei that he would do it, so how couldn't he finish it? He had to be credible. He was getting increasingly tired and sleepy by the second. Even for an Iron Man like Zhong Yi, he could not continuously focus with such intensity on a task for 13 or 14 hours straight. There were also times where he would feel tired as well. Oh yes, there's that. Suddenly, Zhong Yi remembered an item he had gotten from the lottery draw the last time. Other than the one-up and fruit of agility, he had also drawn 20 bottles of strength potion. Based on his experience with using the health potion, and getting healed when he was involved in a fight with Wang Shuaixin's son at Beijing television station, 
he felt that the strength potion would also let him regain his strength in the same way. He wondered if it would be useful in this situation. He opened the inventory menu to retrieve a bottle of strength potion and gulped it down quickly. The next moment, he felt a warm stream of energy surging from within and his blood flow seemingly increasing throughout this body. John Yi's eyes brightened up as he balled his fists knowing that the potion had taken effect immediately. He recovered much of his strength and perked up again. He continued to work. 121 sigs. 122 sigs. Aya, this one was a little out of place. He quickly removed and carefully stuck it on again. 144 sigs. In the entire recording studio, he was the only one busy working. Outside. The corridor had several sections where the fluorescent lights were dimmed. Other than the department on duty, the whole building of the television station was almost fully dark. There were not many lights on in the silence of the night. 5 a.m. It was almost daybreak. At the end of the corridor, some footsteps thudded. Station head, I'm sorry we had to trouble you and make you come down here in the middle of the night over some small issues. If it has the potential to affect the television broadcast, then it is no small issue. You're right. This is my fault. I did not make the staff to get the equipment ready in advance. Haha, <laughs> it's fine. Has it been fixed? Yes, it's been fixed. The signal will restart in a short while. Alrighty then. You should hurry and go back to get some rest. I'm not going back again. I no longer feel tired. A man and a woman were walking from a distance away. The man who was in his forties looked like he was an assistant. The woman was an old lady in her late fifties with a head full of white hair which did not look dirty or messy. Her short hair was neat and permed, making her look very spirited. Suddenly, the old lady spotted something ahead. Oh, why are the lights on over there? That's the recording studio, isn't it? There's still someone doing a recording at this time. The middle-aged assistant was stunned. That can't be. Maybe they forgot to switch off the lights? Who would be recording a program in the middle of the night? When the two of them approached, they saw that doors to the recording studio were left opened. Peeking in casually, they saw four or five people lying down on some chairs and a young man who was still awake. He seemed fully focused on a strangely shaped model, a pile of cigarettes at the side, though they did not know what he was doing. The old lady asked curiously, that kid looks familiar. Is he Zhong Yi? The middle-aged assistant was taken aback but replied, that's him. Why is he, oh, I know. Our stations, quit smoking, PSA was withdrawn from airing. But since today is the world no tobacco day, and we were unable to come up with another ad in time, I heard that someone had requested that Zhong Yi come and help save the situation. He has been here since yesterday morning handling the ad's production. He had heard about Zhong Yi's time at the station from others. After all, Zhong Yi was one of the top C-list celebrities, and was closely related with the television station due to the many incidents between them. Of course his presence at the station would not be kept hidden. Many people had even been talking about him yesterday during work. The old lady said, he started yesterday morning? The middle-aged assistant nodded. When I came to work in the evening, I saw him busy working at the advertising department. It's almost the next morning now. The old lady glanced at her watch. The middle-aged assistant anxiously replied, yes, why is Zhong Yi still working now? It's just him? He has been working continuously for the last 20 hours? Even a god wouldn't be able to take it. He's really risking his life for this. He also knew that the station's quit-smoking advertisement had been withdrawn and that they were in trouble. But even so, why would he tempt fate this way by working for 20 hours straight? And you're the only one left to do all the work? You, just what are you thinking? The old lady asked, how much did we pay him to take this urgent job? The middle-aged assistant gave a wry smile and said, I think, nothing? He was asked by one of our satellite channel's producers to do a favor for the station. I heard from them that Zhong Yi did not ask for a single cent. The old lady asked again to confirm, volunteering? I suppose so, the middle-aged assistant answered ambiguously. Voluntary? Was there anyone who would tempt fate for a voluntary job? 
If something happened to you while you were incredibly tired, would it be worth it? Afraid that the station head had forgotten some past issues, he added, ever since Wang Shuaixin's incident, Zhang Yi's relationship with the station hasn't been that good anymore. It was deputy station head WAN who signed the letter firing Zhang Yi, so because of that, his relationship with us became quite bad. I'm still wondering why he agreed to help the station in this matter. He's even doing it so earnestly. He spoke such, still unable to wrap his head around what was going on. The old lady smiled and said, I've heard a lot about this Zhong Yi, but this is the first time I've seen him at the station. From what you've just told me, I find that man quite interesting. She paused for a moment. Go on ahead, little Wu. You still have some work to do, so there's no need to keep accompanying me. The middle-aged assistant said, station head, what about you? A sparkle of curiosity glimmering in her eyes, the old lady said, I'm going to stroll around a bit. Chapter 576 ad finished. It was past 5 a.m. The effects of the strength potion was already wearing off. Although he had recovered quite a bit of strength in the middle of the night, that did not mean it wouldn't be used up. Zhong Yi was starting to yawn continuously, but kept pinching his brows with his fingers to keep himself up so that he could continue sticking the cigarettes onto the prop. One sig. Another sig. Just a little more. Nearly there. Almost done. Suddenly, Zhong Yi glimpsed the silhouette of a person who had appeared beside him at some point, which ended up sending shivers down his spine. He half screamed, Whoa! It was an amiable looking old lady with a head full of white hair. Xu Yu Hong said with a smile, Did I give you a fright? Zhong Yi said casually, I did get frightened since you didn't even make a sound when you walked in. It's not that I didn't make a sound, but rather because you were perhaps too focused, said Xu Yu Hong. That's true. Zhong Yi continued his work and said, but it was a good fright. I was almost unable to hold off my sleepiness any longer, but I'm good now since you got me there. Xu Yu Hong asked, why are you not resting? Zhong Yi looked at the cigarette in his hand before sticking it on, and answered her without turning to face her, I would have slept if I could have. The problem here is that I can't since there's still a bunch of work that's waiting for me to finish. Which department are you from? Xu Yu Hong spoke, me? I'm from upstairs. Zhong Yi said, from the equipment department? Are you working overtime or did you just get to work? Xu Yu Hong smiled. I've just arrived. You could say that I have an early shift today. Zhong Yi said, then it must be hard on you. You haven't retired yet. Xu Yu Hong sighed, I can't retire yet, but I've still got some strength left in me. Besides, my grandchildren are still depending on me to raise them. Zhong Yi said, you still have some strength. At your age, you should be relaxing instead. Xu Yu Hong laughed. I'm still healthy and in good shape. Really? Zhong Yi looked at her. Xu Yu Hong nodded. I just did a checkup at the beginning of the year. I'm as good as you young uns. Zhong Yi clapped and said, you're that healthy? That's good then. Auntie, quick. Since you're here for work early and have nothing to do yet, do you see this box here? Help me take the cigarettes out one by one. When I glue one onto this model here, you pass a new one to me. Having said so, he had already designated a task for the old lady. It'd be nice if you just took it out lightly and not squeeze it until it gets bent. Thanks, auntie. I'll buy you a meal sometime. I'm afraid that I won't have enough time to complete this if I do it by myself. This task is really urgent. Xu Yu Hong was stunned. Huh? Zhong Yi said, please, auntie. Xu Yu Hong said, sure. She was tickled by what was happening here. She bowed over to take a cigarette out of the box and gave it to him. You're Zhong Yi, right? I've heard that you don't have a terribly good relationship with Beijing television station. This is their problem, so why are you so bothered about it? Zhong Yi took the cigarette from her and stuck it onto the model. Heh, I'm not doing this for the television station. It's just Beijing television station, what's it got to do with me? If they were the ones who looked for me to help them, I wouldn't have cared even if they offered to pay me. This bro's advertisement productions cannot be bought by just money alone. Xu Yu Hong glanced at him and offered the next cigarette to him. Then why? 
Zhong Yi said matter-of-factly, for a friend. Brother who was the one who brought me into the television industry. Back when I had offended the radio networks and had no place to go, brother who helped me by roping me into Beijing television station. It was right here that I managed to have a program of my own and raise my name. Do you think I would forget about it? Just a call from brother who and I would agree to help him no matter what. There are some favors that one must repay no matter what. Moreover, I did not ask for a single cent from Beijing television station. Do you know why? Because I'm repaying the love I have for the station. That's why I agreed to take on this project. If I don't accept any money from them and in turn do them a favor, then I will no longer owe the station anything. I will have paid my dues. It doesn't matter if others care about this or know about this at all. As long as I'm comfortable with myself, it's good enough. I'm the kind of person who others may let down, but I must never let others down. Xu Yuhong narrowed her eyes and said, so you still have some love for the station. Zhong Yi casually remarked, I'm a born and bred Beijinger too. Since childhood, I've watched the programs on this station, so even if I say that I don't have any feelings for it, I doubt anyone would believe me. But what happened later definitely made me a little bitter. It's a complicated matter, yeah, but it's already in the past. Xu Yuhong continued handing him the cigarettes as she said, there isn't much time left till tomorrow's final approval deadline, right? You haven't even completed the prop yet and you're talking about recording the ad? It's almost dawn. I doubt you'll be able to finish it. Forget it. Why don't you drop what you're doing and let's sit down to have a chat? She turned to look for a chair. Zhong Yi said, he, didn't you say you were in good health? That you were as good as us young uns? But you've just been here for a short time and you're already feeling tired? Don't tell me you were just boasting? Xu Yu home. Zhong Yi said, Auntie, help me for a little longer, won't you? A healthy lifestyle depends on exercise and this isn't even be considered heavy lifting. It's good for your body to move about and around. There's definitely not enough time, Xu Yu Hong said helplessly. Zhong Yi said with determination, there's definitely enough time. Xu Yu Hong raised her hand and showed it to Zhong Yi. Look at the time yourself. Zhong Yi still smiled, and then said, I don't need to see. There's definitely enough time. Xu Yu Hong asked, why are you so sure? Zhong Yi said, because I promised a friend I would do it. Besides, this ad doesn't involve me alone, so there can't be any mishaps. I've already made the promise, so I must carry it out. Would I have any face left otherwise? When brother who helped me last time, he did not make any excuses or exploit me by taking advantage of my situation. Besides, I'm still full of energy now, so how can I just drop it like that? Even at the eleventh hour, I must do it even if I have to pay for it with my life. Xu Yu Hong looked at him, then walked back again and took out another cigarette to pass to him. You haven't slept in 24 hours already, right? You're tempting fate now. Are you sure you can handle it? Yes. Zhong Yi's tone was very light but also quite determined. Xu Yu Hong acknowledged him and said, then I will help you all the way to the end. One sig followed by another. As he chatted with another person, Zhong Yi did not feel as sleepy anymore. The number of mistakes he made due to lack of concentration was also reduced. With every movement, he became more familiar with the repetitive motions which also helped speed things up. 91% 93% 96% Finally, the 3D model of the pair of lungs was complete. Zhong Yi did not know what time it was nor did he bother to check. After he completed the model, he anxiously did a 360-degree check for any problems before also taking a camera, and recording the full structure of the prop once over. Finished. Perfect. Xu Yu Hong looked at the model. Is this a model of a pair of lungs? How are you intending to make this ad? The quit-smoking ads these days are all quite similar. How can there still be any fresh ideas? Zhong Yi laughed. You'll know when the video is done. Xu Yu Hong contemplated for a moment before saying, what I'm curious about right now is how you intend to use the 3D model. You've spent so much effort to make this with pure manpower? Why didn't you use CGI instead? Why didn't you make a computer model? Isn't that more convenient? 
After you've completed the model, don't you still have to digitize it for the final shot? Zhong Yi was already setting up the video camera, that's different. A computer is not everything. Some effects can only be realistically shown by using an actual item. All preparations done. He switched on the camera and started recording. He started off with a shot from the front, zooming in slowly. Next, for the partial shots, he experimented with many different angles to capture the footage. Even though Zhong Yi was not a professional camera operator, he still knew some of the skills. Besides, the ad footage was really simple to begin with since it did not involve any people nor any narration. There was just this prop model of a pair of lungs, so it didn't need a real professional camera operator to record the footage. It was a piece of cake. After the initial shots were filmed, it was time for a more troublesome step. It was a long continuous take, so there couldn't be any hiccups. If he got it wrong, it would be a disaster as he would then need to build a new model again to reshoot the footage. After thinking about it for a while, Zhong Yi had a stroke of genius. He decided that he would experiment on the previously flawed model first. He retrieved some props he had gotten others to prepare for him earlier and then laid out the storyboard he had planned to identify three ignition points on the 3D model pair of lungs. He then began. He first lit a part of it to test the self-assembled inhaling mechanism. It seemed to not work too well at first, so he made some adjustments after which everything went smoothly. Then he lit the second and third spots. All three ignition points were supposed to have different amounts of cigarettes that had to be lit and could not be the same as the others. Some needed two cigarettes to be lit while another spot needed ten. Ten minutes later, the test run was done. Xu Yu Hong, observing the whole process, had gradually revealed an amazed expression. Little Zhong, I think I know what effect you're trying to achieve. Zhong Yi was getting a little nervous at this point. The next one will be the actual recording. I have to get it right in one take. Xu Yu Hong went up to him and said, let me help you with the camera. You look inexperienced and probably don't know how to operate it. She placed her hand on the equipment and switched some controls with a few clicks and clacks, pressing some buttons and then adjusting the screens, her actions not understood by Zhong Yi, but were definitely those of a professional. Zhong Yi's eyes brightened. Auntie, I'm depending on you then. Xu Yu Hong smiled and said, just pay attention to what you're doing over there and leave the rest to me. Zhong Yi reminded her, you better not miss the shot. Don't worry. Don't forget to press the record button. I won't forget to do that. Are you really going to be okay? Are you going to light it or not? Yes. Zhong Yi gave a few more worried looks before finally kindling the fire. He was being very careful. At this moment, he held his breath, knowing that all the hard work in the past 24 hours was for this one take. The fire lit. The three ignition spots started to burn. Xu Yuhong adjusted the lenses, slowly changing focus while signaling with her hand. Seeing that, Zhong Yi pressed button on the self-assembled inhaling mechanism and the ignited spots burned brighter, adding a more dramatic feel to the burning sequence. Inhale. The ignited spots burned brighter. Inhale again. The ignited points burned brighter again. Soon after, the recording was completed. Zhong Yi quickly ran over to check out the finished product. When he saw that the old lady had perfectly recorded everything he had wanted, he couldn't conceal his excitement any longer. He retrieved the recorded footage and quickly went into a workstation to do the post-production. Most of the remaining work was done earlier by the technical staff from the advertising department. All he needed to do now was put them together. Zhong Yi furiously tapped away at the computer. His capabilities in network technology needed no mentioning. After all he was the famous, too, a globally wanted hacker. But when it came to ordinary technical skills like 3D object manipulation, they were not something he dared flatter himself on. He was only as good as the typical student doing a non-computer related major. Seeing his clumsy handling, Xu Yu Hong couldn't help but say, come on, let me do it instead. You even know how to do this? Zhong Yi was a little stunned. Xu Yu Hong smiled and replied, I worked as a reporter, an editor, and many other related jobs in the television industry when I was young. Although I don't use them often, my basics still exist. So this won't trouble me at all. 
just sit down beside me and tell me what your concept is. You are the supervisor while I edit it according to your concept. John Yi thought to himself, wondering why an old lady who was in charge of equipment would be so versatile and talented in so many areas. Chapter 577 This old lady is the station head? Morning, 7 a.m. The sun had risen. The day shift hosts, cleaners, and others were trickling in for work. The various departments in Beijing television station were starting a new day. Each department's offices lighted up. In the recording studio, Zhang Yi put away the props and equipment one by one and cleared the room. There were still other teams who needed to use the recording studio afterwards as they had only booked the studio until 8 a.m. This was why he made space for them by clearing his team's stuff away. After more or less cleaning the studio, Zhang Yi sat down in a chair feeling totally exhausted. He felt as though his hands and feet did not physically belong to him anymore. Yet as he sat there, his eyes did not show a hint of tiredness. In fact, they even gleamed brightly because he had completed what others thought was an impossible task. Finished. The ad production had been completed. Zhang Yi turned to the side and said, Auntie, I just want to thank you for all your help. I'll let the team know to put in a good word for you and give you the credit you deserve for helping out in the production of this ad. Hopefully, the equipment department people will give you a promotion as well, ha. Huh? Xu Yuhong smiled and said, there's no need for that. Of course I need to. You've been such a great help, Zhang Yi insisted. Xu Yuhong shook her head. I can't be promoted anymore. Zhang Yi said, yo, you've offended someone upstairs too? Who did you offend? Xu Yuhong said in amusement, I should be asking you instead. Who did I offend? Then why can't an old employee like you who oversees the equipment get promoted? They should at least give you a pay raise. Don't be bothered by me. I will definitely help you get a raise. Although I may not have a good relationship with the station and my personal relationships with people are also kind of poor, a small matter like that won't be an issue. Zhang Yi said, besides, you're an old lady with such well-rounded technical skills while at the same time so versatile and talented. It's such a waste staying in the equipment department. Xu Yuhong laughed lightly. Thank you for your praise. Suddenly, the snoring nearby stopped. Sun Han woke and quickly sat up in his chair. His first instinct was to look at his watch, but when he saw the time, he was stunned. He exclaimed loudly, Ayo. It's almost 8 a.m. With this loud voice shouting for all to hear, the others were also roused. The old young sick injured quartet who were just transitioning from waking up were also freaked out by this. Teacher Zhong. It's morning already? You, why didn't you wake us up? Yeah, didn't you say you'd rouse us after 30 minutes? Even though Sun Han and his team knew that if the ad was not completed on time, they would receive some form rather heavy punishment while Beijing television station would also face a hefty fine or a warning from the authorities, but punishment was just punishment. However, attitude was something else. If Zhang Yi was willing to come volunteer and help out for free without even getting any rest, then how did they deserve to rest for a good six to seven hours? It did not seem right at all. But Zhang Yi did not make much of it and just said, it's fine. I saw that you were all really tired. And since you guys wouldn't be able to help much even if you were awake, I decided not to wake you all up. Sun Han looked apologetic. With the deadline we were facing, yet we still. The intern girl was also flushed from embarrassment. We are so sorry, Teacher Zhong. We made you do all the work by yourself. Have you been working all this time without rest since midnight? Zhang Yi smiled and said, I can still take it. I'm used to working overtime anyway. Although the ad could not be completed, Sun Han was also thoroughly convinced by Zhong Yi about this matter. There were stories about Zhong Yi and his incidents that were talked about within the station. It was known that he had always been a very disputed character. There were also a lot of criticisms of him, but when face to face and having interacted with Zhong Yi directly, Sun Han realized that Zhong Yi was totally different from hearsay or his preconceived notions. From just this incident alone, it could be seen that Zhang Yi was a person who valued friendship a lot. When his ex-leader called him and requested his help, he immediately got down to working, and did so for 24 hours straight without rest or any grumbling. 
even though the ad was not finished, he had still tried his best till the very end. Sun Han felt that if he had a friend like Zhong Yi, he would surely be considered a lucky person. Sorry, teacher Zhong. We made you work so hard for nothing. Before he could finish saying what he wanted, Sun Han suddenly caught sight of someone in the corner of his eye. It was an old lady. Eh? Hey? Why does this person look so familiar? Suddenly, Sun Han wore an expression of shock. Station head. The old young sick injured quartet also saw her and called out in unison, Station head. When Zhong Yi heard this greeting, he suddenly felt as though he did not understand what the situation was. Damn it! What the hell is this? Station head? What station head? Huh? This old lady? Xu Yuhong laughed for a bit and said, Good morning. All of you have worked hard. Sun Han quickly answered, It's nothing, it's nothing. This is our job. What, what brought you here? Xu Yuhong said, Me? I was just passing by, it's nothing important. I'm going back now. After that, she did not say anything else and just strolled out of the recording studio. Only to leave Zhong Yi staring with his eyes and mouth wide open at the old lady's retreating image. The leader of Beijing television station, station head Xu Yuhong, that was her? Zhong Yi was of course not unfamiliar with this name since he had heard it before. But as he had never seen her before, he could never have expected that the old lady from the equipment department he had been dealing with was in fact the station head of Beijing television station. But didn't she mention something about working upstairs? Thinking about it now, it wasn't just the equipment room upstairs. The upstairs of upstairs of upstairs of upstairs was exactly where the station head's office was at. F asterisk asterisk K. No wonder. No wonder this old lady was so well versed in using the computer and even knew all those technical skills among other things. If he had thought about it earlier, he should have known that she couldn't possibly be someone who took care of the equipment. An old lady at that age, how could she have had so much knowledge on complex issues like these? How could she have such strong learning capability? She definitely must have been from one of the early batches of university students in China. Being a university student at that time was a very different concept to the current university student. Anyone who was good enough to qualify for university at that era was definitely a rarity, a, whoa, man amongst dragons and phoenixes. They were surely not your typical everyday people. Even if they didn't do too well, they couldn't possibly be relegated to only taking care of the equipment, right? Good God! The person he ordered around for several hours to do menial jobs turned out to be the highest ranking leader in all of Beijing television station. He had been making the station head do things for him. He had been instructing her to do this and that all this while. Oh, in the whole of the television station, no, in any industry, no one else would have dared to do that. When Zhong Yi remembered that he even mentioned that he would put in a good word for her to get her a pay raise, even he couldn't help but find it amusing. The salary of a station head was decided by the country, so how could he even have a say in something like that? How mean! That old lady was truly too mean. When the station head left, Sun Han immediately felt more comfortable and quickly asked, Teacher Zhong, why did the station head come over here? Was she here to supervise the quit smoking ad production? Ah, yes. Zhong Yi said ambiguously. He was definitely too ashamed to tell them that he had been ordering her about for the past three hours. Sun Han and the awesome quartet all looked at each other, thinking that they were surely done for this time. Even the station head had attached such importance to this PSA and they had yet to finish it. They were definitely going to get into trouble this time. Zhong Yi said, let's pack up and go back to the office for now. As their things had already been sorted, everyone just took a box and carried them upstairs. Chapter 578, Petrified. At the television station. On the fifth floor where the advertising department was located. The World No Tobacco Day public service announcement was expected to be released around noon, so the deadline was between 8 and 9 a.m. They were to submit the end result for approval. Only after that would the ad be allowed to be broadcast on TV. Hence, at this moment, there were already two leaders from advertising department waiting there. This was a first-time public service announcement crisis for Beijing television station. 
Because of this, those two were anxiously waiting for the public service announcement department to submit the finished product. Where are they? Why aren't they here yet? Are they at the recording studio? Are they still recording? It's over. They won't make it on time. Some staff members of the advertising department who had helped out yesterday afternoon deliberately arrived at work earlier to see if there was anything more they could do to help. When they saw that there was no one in the office and sensed the atmosphere, they felt that they were probably not needed anymore, since there was probably nothing they could do anyway. Sunhan carried a box and proceeded upstairs. Little Sunday. One of the advertising department's deputy head said anxiously, How'd it go? Everyone is waiting for the ad. Did you guys manage to complete it? The deputy director of the advertising department asked with a serious face, Is it not finished? Sun Han sighed and answered, Leader, I'm sorry, it's my fault. The deputy director's expression changed and said, Didn't I send over a lot of help yesterday? Why did it still, never mind? As he spoke, his tone also calmed. As a leader of an advertising agency, he certainly knew how much time and effort was required to produce an ad. Even with a day's time, a roughly put together advertisement would be difficult to produce, even more so for an advertisement that had to be reshot to fit the new regulations. Before they had started on this project, everyone had already believed that this was an impossible task. This was a project that no advertising company wanted to take on. So no one had actually placed much hope on it being completed. Now that it hadn't been, it was still completely within reason. The intern girl who had followed them upstairs said, Teacher Jong has already tried his best and had worked without sleep for 24 hours. Most people would probably be able to survive without sleep for a whole day and night, but one prerequisite was the absence of physical and mental exertion. Just compare watching movies that interest you for 24 hours straight while taking breaks to work for a bit, versus working intensively for 24 hours straight. These two were totally different notions similar to the difference between heaven and earth. When the people from the advertising department heard that, they drew a deep breath. 24 hours just to battle against the deadline. Zhong Yi really risked his life for this. Hi, it wasn't easy for Zhong Yi either. No one could have completed this task since the time given was too short. We're done for. We'll surely get fined this time. When the media starts to report on this, the reputation of Beijing television station will surely be affected. It feels like these new policies were targeted at us. Stop grumbling. Just count ourselves unlucky. If we had another day's time, there might have still been some hope. Don't say any more, hi. We've already done our best. Yeah, we did all that we could have done. If we can't complete it, then that's that. It's life. The people from the advertising department were ready to disperse. When the person in charge of submitting the ad for approval saw this, he also sighed and turned to leave with the other leaders. But right at this point, Zhong Yi came upstairs. Noticing everyone's behavior, he felt very surprised and said, Ha, huh, why are there so many people here? What's the matter? Where are you guys going? The person in charge of the approval process comforted him by saying, Teacher Zhong, thanks for your effort. When we were faced with such a difficult situation, you still came back to help us. He had worked with him before, during the Electricity Conservation Public Service announcement. Even though they did not know each other very well, they had still spoken a little before. Sun Han also said, thank you. It wasn't known when Hu Fei had arrived, but when he did, he walked straight up to Zhong Yi and said, little Zhong, you've already done your best. Zhong Yi was nearly confused by them, and didn't know how to respond. Then he said, what are you all talking about? When did I say I didn't finish the ad? The intern girl was shocked. Ah. Sunhan blinked a few times and said, weren't there some problems with the prop? There was. Zhong Yi laughed. But overnight, I completed another prop which met the requirements. Oh, aren't you already carrying it in that box in your hands? Didn't I already state that since I'd agreed to handle this project, I would make sure that it would be completed and done to its best? So why did you all think that I wouldn't finish it? Hu Fei said in surprise, what? Sun Han was overwhelmed with excitement and said, you, you did it all by yourself. Not only that. 
Zhong Yi said confidently, in fact, it is also the version I am most satisfied with. At least I feel that it is hard to find fault with. The deputy director of the advertising department quickly asked, where is it? Zhong Yi waved the laptop in his hand around. Quick, let's have a look at it. The leader also had not expected that he would really manage to do it. Everyone walked to the office where there was a proper projector and display screen equipment. Suddenly, there were seven or eight people coming over from the opposite side. When everyone took a look at who it was, they were surprised to see station head Xu Yu Hong, walking over along with two station leaders and staff members from the station head's office. The station leaders were coming. Station head, everyone quickly greeted. Xu Yu Hong smiled and asked, is the final version of the ad ready? The deputy director of the advertising department said, teacher Zhong Yi said that it's finished. We were just going to have a look at it. If it's good enough, we'll send it for approval and then arrange the broadcast. Xu Yu Hong nodded. Okay, let's watch it together then. As even the station head had joined them, when the director of the advertising department and many other leaders of the other departments learned of it, they also hurried over to join them. The whole station's middle and upper management team, together with the people from the advertising department were all gathered in a large office, seated and waiting for the showing of the PSA. Zhong Yi glanced at Xu Yu Hong and nodded to her. Xu Yu Hong smiled lightly and nodded back at him. Zhong Yi tested the equipment, then connected the signal feed. As it was necessary to hook up the amplifier as well, he tinkered with the configuration for a few minutes. While everyone sat there waiting, a station leader asked for permission from Xu Yu Hong, and seeing her give nod of approval, he lit a cigarette. A few of the other leaders who were also heavy smokers also secretly lit their cigarettes. A while later, with the background music drifting out from the speakers, the PSA began. It's beginning. Everyone, quiet. Put your cell phones on silent. Everyone stared at the big screen not blinking, curious to see the final product. Although Zhong Yi had claimed that the ad was completed, they still wouldn't quite believe it unless they saw it with their own eyes. In just such a short time, in a situation where only Zhong Yi alone was left working on it, what kind of public service announcement could he have possibly made? The staff who were involved in the ad's production knew that there was not a single line of narration nor any character scenes in it. It only had one unique prop, of which no one could understand purpose of, in the ad. If this was the one and only prop used in the PSA, would it work? No one knew what kind of style Zhong Yi's ad would have. At the next moment, the ad was unveiled. It was introduced by a gloomy-sounding piece of music, done according to the original PSA's background music in his previous world. Sun Han had found some people from the station to help create it by working overtime. As they had spent a lot of effort on it, this effort could also be felt when it was presented in this final copy of the ad. The first image appeared showing a shot of part of a cigarette. The second set of images showed the cigarettes being stacked on top of each other, but nothing much could be deduced from this. Sun Han wiped away his sweat and said, what is this? The awesome quartet asked, what are these images trying to show? I don't understand it. The other advertising professionals also showed some expressions of disappointment. There was no narration, no characters, no smoking is hazardous to the health statements. There weren't even any statistics of the millions of deaths each year, so how could this still be called a quit smoking public service announcement? How could there be such a quit smoking announcement? They began whispering among themselves. Several of the leaders from the advertising department also had some suspicions about it. This was the first time they had doubted the standard of Zhong Yi's advertisement product, because from the first five seconds of this ad, it showed just how odd it was. It was really too off from the beaten path. Up until here, they could not even see how this was a quit smoking ad. Besides, how long could a public service announcement run for? Their task this time had stated that the ad would be limited to about 15 seconds, of which five seconds had already been wasted up for this. They were no longer expecting much of the effects of the latter part of the ad. However, just as everyone was revealing their disappointed expressions, at the very next second, an image silenced all the gossiping in the audience. Everyone fell silent. Because a pair of lungs composed of cigarettes had appeared on the screen and looked overly realistic. Even though they knew the lungs were formed out of cigarettes and was fake, 
the 3D composition and situational meaning of it left many shaken and stunned. In addition, the densely packed cigarettes formed an intense image that left anyone with a fear of holes too afraid to look. At this moment, the cigarettes started to burn. One spot flared up, followed by a second and third point flaming. On the lungs, the parts where it had been lit started to give off faint wisps of smoke. What chilled everyone to the bone was the introduction of a breathing track laid over the background music. SSH. Who? SSH. Who? A station leader who was smoking suddenly felt shivers go down his spine. The cigarette in his hand fell to the ground. With every slow breath, the three points of flame on the lungs reacted like how a cigarette would burn brighter with every breath. The cigarettes burned constantly, with the tendency to spread to the other cigarettes. At the beginning, it was only one cigarette burning, then along with the breathing track, the other cigarettes making up the rest of the lungs also started to burn, increasing the range of the smolder. As the cigarettes burnt out bit by bit, the formation of the ashes also got wider. Breathe in. Burn. Breathe in. Burn. The entire lung started to emit smoke. A few others who were smoking in the office also broke out into cold sweats and quickly threw away the cigarettes in their hands as their faces quickly paled. F asterisk asterisk K. What the F asterisk asterisk K was this ad? Towards the end, the lungs fully burned out, followed by a coughing track before a few lines appeared across the screen, please quit smoking. Give life a chance, make a new choice. Chapter 579 I'll have a smoke to calm my nerves. Collapse, when the PSA ended, the entire office was in a state of utter silence. If one described this situation in detail, it was perhaps not the type of excited silence you'd expect from watching your favorite ball team winning the championships, nor the silence you'd get from being shocked from witnessing something extremely amazing happening before you. More accurately, it should be similar to the experience of you being yourself and doing whatever you were doing for one moment, when suddenly, you receive a medical update about yourself from the hospital that tells you that you only have a few days left to live. This was the atmosphere that was spreading throughout the office at this very moment. One second. Two seconds. Finally, someone made a sound. The old comrade from the public service announcement department suddenly cried out without warning, Ayo, my god and then abruptly clutched his chest as if his lungs suddenly hurt. Why is there the smell of cigarettes? Quickly open the windows to air out the room. Stop smoking. The harmful effects of secondhand smoke are greater than smoking itself. Yeah, stop smoking. Damn. That really gave me a fright. This ad is just too, it just leaves me totally speechless with no reply. I can't take it anymore. I feel like my lungs are on fire right now. How is this even a PSA? It won't be held accountable if any of us get scared to death. And it's not even scaring us visually. This really terrifies me on a visceral level. When I used to watch horror films, especially those Japanese horror films, I'd never even experienced this kind of feeling before. Not only does it feel fearful, there's even a feeling of disgust and a chill that spreads throughout my body, as though there's something crawling in my lungs. That's right. If you're a non-smoker, you won't understand that feeling. I was still wondering. I wondered why teacher John would ask to make such a prop. So that was how he planned to use it. This. This PSA is too bloody. There's no blood nor any images of a real blackened lung, but why is it that even though we know it's just a model lung, it feels even scarier than a real lung? I can't take it anymore. I need a break. Having made so many ads before, this is the first time I've seen one like this, after watching it once, I do not wish to ever see it again. Does it need to be so aggressive? How exciting. They've really upped the ante this time. For someone who didn't usually smoke, it was still fine. But for those who were regular smokers, especially the hardcore ones, they had at this time started to panic. They could feel something disturbing enveloping them and couldn't shake the feeling no matter what. With every breath, they would inadvertently remember the PSA and those lifelike burning lungs with the nauseating looking ashes embedded within them. That sense of fear was really difficult to describe in words. Sun Han was also frightened quite badly by it. Only now did he understand the reason why Zhong Yi had given those series of tasks for them to do in the production process. 
in just a day. For a 15 second duration. A full ad was made without any flaws. He swore that, even among other foreign quit smoking ads, he had never seen a public service announcement that had been done this way. An ad that could be made in such a way, could it even be considered a creative ad? Technically speaking, it simply did not fulfill the criteria for creative advertising, but Sun Han knew that this was really creative advertising. It wasn't even the normal kind of creative advertising but one that would make others shout, an amazing, groundbreaking new form of creativity. How extreme! This PSA was really too damn extreme. Many of the people had now turned their focus to Zhong Yi, wondering how his mind had developed to such a level. Could it be that the structure of his brain was different from any other normal person's? A PSA that could even be called an exemplary global public service announcement, an ad that no other creative professional had ever produced. And yet, all of these had come from a person who wasn't even considered a creative professional. It was in fact produced by someone who was a broadcast host. Suddenly, Xu Yuhong slowly stood up and started clapping while smiling. When the others saw this, they stood up quickly and started clapping as well. In the blink of an eye, applause echoed through entire office. The other station leaders were still unsure of what to think, but when they saw the station head clapping, they also followed suit. However, the staff from the advertising department were truly impressed and were really clapping sincerely for this PSA and for Zhong Yi, a man who had offered his hand out to them when they were in trouble, who had still battled on without conceding even when others had given up, who had produced an ad so great that it left them industry professionals in the dust. He was too awesome. Zhong Yi smiled and said, looks like everyone is satisfied with it. That's good enough. The auditor on the approval board was also very excited. I'll send it in for approval immediately and report it to the authorities. If this ad doesn't pass, then I doubt any other ad would get approved. Sun Han was very emotional as he went forward and shook Zhong Yi's hand. Teacher Zhong. Thank you. Thank you. Zhong Yi waved his hand and said, it's not my credit alone. The colleagues from the advertising department who came to help out yesterday, you and your team, the staff members who helped to compose the background music, it was all due to everyone's hard work. If had just been me alone, then I couldn't have completed it even if I had worked non-stop for three days and night without rest. So don't thank me. Sun Han said, without you, we couldn't have finished it at all. The intern girl whose eyes were already reddening said, we really did it. That's right. We really did it. Many of those in the office were unable to hide their excited state, especially Sun Han and the others from the public service announcement department. This impossible task was delegated to them and they were responsible for it. They participated in the entire production and understood better than anyone else how difficult this process had been. At midnight, they were still battling to complete the ad, but after realizing that there was a problem with the prop, it could be imagined just how they felt when they suffered this setback. Today, at the very last second, with the help from Zhong Yi, they had miraculously completed the PSA. The feelings they had now were probably only understood by them. Thank you. Teacher Zhong, thank you so much. You're really too awesome. Compared to us, you are the one who seems more like an advertising professional. Many of the staff from the advertising department also came to thank Zhong Yi as the public service announcement department was considered to be part of it. Zhong Yi's offer to help the PSA department for free was equivalent to helping the advertising department. Having worked a whole day and night without rest, they definitely needed to thank him for all the hard work. Over at the other side, Xu Yuhong suddenly asked without warning, Little Zhong, you did this voluntarily? When Sun Han heard this and noticed the station head's concern, he immediately answered for him, yes, that's right. Teacher Zhong didn't ask for a single red cent. We had initially wanted to pay him for the production fee, but... Zhong Yi said indifferently, since this is public service, why would I want money for it? Xu Yuhong nodded lightly. Then how about this, we will make a small edit at the end of the advertisement. Let's add a, produced by Zhong Yi, at the bottom of the screen or something similar to that. Zhong Yi eyes widened. A. Eh? A great offer like this exists? One of the station leaders did not quite agree with this and said, station head, there's no precedent to handling PSAs that way. Another leader also added, yes, using a person's name in a PSA. 
Is that acceptable? Xu Yuhong explained, in the conditions of a company sponsorship, they can add their name into the PSA, as long as it doesn't exceed the recommended duration, so it should be the same for individuals. I understand that this idea came from Little Zhong and he was also the one who contributed the most to its production, so we can consider this ad as sponsored by him. As a member of the public, that shouldn't be a problem at all. With the station head's approval, no one else dared to say anything. But Sun Han was very satisfied with this outcome. At least, they hadn't let teacher Zhong do all this for nothing. It might only be a credit roll for him, but the meaning of it was very significant. Since he knew Zhong Yi's ambitions laid in the entertainment circle, having additional exposure would guarantee the advancement of his fame and career. Besides, because of Zhong Yi's involvement in the Peking University incident a few days ago, he had been targeted by many from the media, as well as expert academics, who criticized him for crossing the line this time. With his contribution to this public service announcement, it would help reclaim a little bit of reputation for him. In short, this was surely a good thing for Zhong Yi. The station leaders left. There were still quite a lot of people who stayed behind to add the finishing touches to the ad. As a whole, there was nothing that needed changing, but some of the finer details that could be improved were improved. The end credit, produced by Zhong Yi, was added in as well. The advertisement was screened for the second time. Some of the more cowardly smokers chose to leave the office before it started. You guys can continue working on it. There should be enough manpower, right? Since we have enough people here, I will go back first. I still have some work to handle. Ahem, this, I, I need to go to the toilet. Even if some one them knew it was their job, they did not want to see the PSA a second time. They were afraid that if they did they wouldn't be able to fall asleep at night. However, Zhong Yi did not seem to have any reaction to this. Up until now, he had resisted the fatigue as he did not want to waste another strength potion. With every bottle he drank, he had one less in his inventory. Even though each bottle had only cost him 100,000 reputation points, these items were easily used up, so he had to treasure each and every one of them. He had to use them in the right situations, and as such, could only use cigarettes to battle his drooping eyelids. He took one out and lit it, and was soon exhaling clouds of smoke from his mouth. A few people beside him immediately distanced themselves from him. Sun Han was dumbfounded. You can still smoke while you're watching this ad? The awesome quartet also expressed their shock at this. Teacher Zhong, aren't you scared? All the other advertising department staff members watched. Zhong Yi looked at them and said, Me? Of course I'm scared. Hu Fei, who had stayed behind, asked in a speechless manner, Then why are you still smoking? Zhong Yi said confidently, it's precisely because I'm so scared that I need to smoke this cigarette to calm my nerves. Sun Han. Hu Fei. The old young sick crippled group. Everyone else from the advertising department. This is indeed an example of the talented being bolder. Chapter 580 Scaring the Whole Country. 9 a.m. in the morning. Zhong Yi's parents' home district. Zhong Yi got out his car very tired. He continuously yawned as he tried to stifle it with his hand. He slowly stumbled into the apartment's corridor and proceeded to head upstairs. On the way up, he took his cell phone out to check on the latest news. Since he did not see any interesting headlines, he entered his own name using one hand and made a search. When the search results were displayed, he saw a headline in the news section which matched what he was searching for. It wasn't an eye-catching news headline but was posted on a web portal three hours earlier. It was possible that the number of people who read it didn't number that many either as the news content wasn't too interesting. Zhong Yi appears at Beijing television station. Some of the pictures posted in the article were taken in the television station's lobby. The content of the article was nothing more than the usual gossip as it recounted the feud between Zhong Yi and Beijing television station. One by one, examples were listed, and at the end of the article, it also expressed doubts and speculated unreliably about Zhong Yi's appearance at the Beijing television station's lobby. Although this news article did not attract much attention, Zhong Yi still felt quite happy when he saw it. The reason was very simple. He had become more aware now that his popularity was no longer the same as before. Back when he had debuted, even if Zhong Yi had some amazing accomplishments, he couldn't get onto the headlines. 
Later on, he managed to get onto the headlines more whenever he caused trouble. However, those were still limited to the times when he caused a big enough incident to be mentioned. But now, even when Zhong Yi did not do anything for the past two days and only showed his face at Beijing television station, he still caught the media's attention and they reported on this news. Disregarding the fact of whether anyone would read this news or not, the simple fact that they even bothered to report it showed that his popularity had risen by a lot. If someone could only get onto the news after causing big trouble, then they could only be considered a common celebrity. However, if you could even get onto the news without doing anything, then you would be considered as a successful celebrity, and that was exactly what Zhong Yi was right now. At home. His mother was at home today as it was her day off. Why didn't you come all of last night? His mother stared at him. Zhong Yi said, Hi, I was helping a friend with something and had to work over time. His mother reminded him, Next time remember to give us a call if you are not coming back. Don't make us stay up for nothing. We wanted to call you but were afraid you might be busy. I know, mom, it's my fault. Zhong Yi smiled and said, Don't say any more. I have to catch up on sleep. Wake me when it's twelve. His mother glanced at him. What do you want for lunch? Zhong Yi sweet talked her, I like any food you cook. Go to sleep. Don't always work overnight in the future, his mother said. When he got to his room, Zhong Yi removed only his shoes and pants. He didn't even take his shirt, but immediately dropped onto the bed instead and fell into a deep sleep. Zhong Yi was very obviously worn out. In the afternoon, Warm rays of sunlight shone through the window. Zhong Yi was sound asleep and even smacked his lips in satisfaction as he slept, rolling around in bed comfortably. Then someone suddenly knocked on the bedroom door and he heard his mother's voice. Son. Um. Time for lunch. Um. Wake up quickly. Ah, uh, I'm coming. Obviously, Zhong Yi hadn't had enough rest yet but he still climbed out of bed to eat lunch. When he came out, he immediately switched on the television and tuned into BTV1. He definitely wanted to check out the results of the production that he worked so hard on for 24 hours without rest. It could also be considered attending the premiere of his PSA. His mother noticed and asked, what news are you waiting for? Zhong Yi smiled. A public service announcement. Just wait and see. His mother asked, the one you did? Yeah, this is the ad I am most satisfied with so far, ha ha. Zhong Yi laughed as he ate and said, however, others might not like it. His mother was a bit speechless. Then why are you so happy? Zhong Yi laughed wickedly. Well, it's supposed to make them dislike it after watching. This is a quit smoking public service announcement. If people do not feel scared after watching it, then what is the purpose of having this PSA? Just watch. I can't say that it will scare everyone, but I can guarantee that at least half of those who watch the PSA will have their hearts shiver. His mother also looked forward to watching it after hearing her son say that. She picked up the landline and made some calls to a few relatives. Hello, little Yi's third aunt, are you at home? Haha, <laughs> little Yi has released another work. It's a PSA on BTV1. I just wanted to tell you, right, starting soon, okay. Whenever Zhong Yi had new achievements or works, as long as they weren't scolding people or fighting sorts of things, his mother would always inform her friends and family. On the internet. Since it was World No Tobacco Day today, there was definitely no lack of this topic online. This topic was also the trend of news reports and discussions as many media outlets published information on the dangers of smoking. But the netizens were not interested in such things. Hi, I am sick of watching all these. It's the same old meaningless stuff every year. Yeah, every year, they show nothing more than the usual crap. Who doesn't know smoking is harmful to the health? Those who wanted to quit have already quit. Even if you talk till someone's head falls off, those hardcore smokers still won't be able to quit. This has always been my point of view. These public service announcements are not effective at all. Who would quit smoking after watching a PSA? This is bullshit. If my smoking addiction strikes, even if you keep showing these lousy ads for 24 hours, I'll still want to smoke. The main reason is still because there is lack of quality with all these quit smoking PSAs. 
you're quite right. The current quit smoking PSAs have already reached a saturation point. Any practical idea had already been used up some years ago. Now, they can only keep on reusing the ideas and maybe just change the way it's presented. But it'll eventually becomes useless. Unless there is innovation. It can't get any more innovative. Who can still innovate? This is the only approach. Besides, if we want creativity, we must look abroad first. The public service announcements from overseas are really so much better than our local ones, but their PSAs are also more or less following the same ideas, so how can you still expect our local advertisement producers to have any new ideas? It's not like I'm worshipping all things foreign, but it's the truth. The quality is not the same, so don't expect too much from the PSAs in this country. The constant broadcast of quit smoking PSAs in these few days is too intense. It's the same on every channel and it's already making me numb to them. I don't feel any pressure to quit at all when I such advertisements while smoking. Me too. Ha ha, I feel the same. A bit past noon. After a news broadcast, the staff lined up the ads to be broadcast. First up was a shampoo advertisement, then a mineral water advertisement, and finally Zhong Yi's quit smoking PSA. At this moment, quite a lot of viewers sat in front of their televisions, most of them had just finished watching the news. They were not really bothered by the advertisements playing or too concerned with them. Some were eating. Some were cooking. Some were preparing to change channels. There were also some who had probably just finished watching the local news on the satellite channels and had just switched channels to BTV1 when the other channel went to a commercial break. The satellite channel had nationwide broadcasting signals. Although not every location could receive the signal as the coverage was not 100% yet, it still had most areas covered. So compared to the previous time when the Save Electricity public service announcement was broadcast on the BTV Arts channel, this quit smoking public service announcement that was broadcast over the satellite channel had a viewership that was countless times higher. It was similar to the Brain Gold advertisement that was broadcast throughout the country. Suddenly, on screen, this year's Beijing television station Quit Smoking PSA, unified across all their channels, was broadcast. Cigarettes. Densely packed cigarettes. As the music played, consecutive deep breathing sounds could be heard. On the television, a ghastly looking replica of a pair of human lungs made out of cigarettes could be seen burning along with the rhythm of breathing and cigarette inhalation, while the lungs could be seen going through a shocking transformation. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale again. The sound of breathing from the television became intolerable to the ears. Towards the end, the only words of the advertisements appeared, please quit smoking. Give life a chance, make a new choice. At the very end. In the bottom right corner. Produced by John Yi. After the PSA ended, a milk advertisement seamlessly followed. At a public housing apartment in Beijing. A young man was looking at Weibo with his head down, discussing with his internet friends how the recent quit smoking PSAs were utter rubbish. Suddenly he looked up and called out to his mother, laughing and saying, Mom, I'm hungry. His mother smiled and said, What do you want to eat? Her son said, Anything will do. I'm so hungry I could eat a horse. His father, who was smoking a cigarette, said, I'm also hungry, I have to work overtime tonight, so I must eat more this afternoon. Do we still have any of the preserved meat left over that old Jong brought from his hometown? Let's have that. Beside him, BTV1's PSA appeared on the television. The young man looked over and was shocked into a daze. The father saw the PSA as well. As the PSA played out, a fascinating number of facial expressions appeared on his face. The cigarette between his fingers, his hand started trembling and he threw the cigarette onto the floor all of a sudden and stamped on it. He couldn't help letting out a curse, F asterisk asterisk K your grandfather. Who made this ad? Their son who was also a smoker took a few breaths and for a moment felt he could not breathe naturally. His rhythm of breathing was all messed up. Mom, I, I am suddenly not hungry anymore. His mother said, ah? His father said, I also, don't want to eat anymore. In the northeast. In a hairdressing salon. Holy shit, it's those PSAs again. Today is World No Tobacco Day. 
We can't avoid it. I'm tired of seeing all these PSAs. There's nothing new at all. As there was hardly any business today, a few of the hairdressers were smoking and chattering away with jovial moods. Then, with every passing second the PSA played, their voices suddenly got softer and softer, and eventually everyone went silent. They were staring at the new LCD television which was installed a few days ago with their eyes and mouths wide open, rooted to their spots. A skinny man stamped out the cigarette butt and said, I, I am going out to get some fresh air. Wait for me. I'll go together with you. The moment he stepped out, another, slightly fatter youth was panic-stricken and held his chest tightly while flicking the cigarette butt in his hand onto the road, not daring to take another puff. Looking at his facial expression, it was obvious that he was very shocked. He said in disbelief, who the hell is so wicked? Making such an ad. Curse him and his 18 generations of ancestors. I nearly could not catch my breath. The skinny man, now pale-faced, said, I need to quit smoking. The fatty touched the cigarette pack in his pocket and felt that he had lost the desire to smoke for at least the next two hours. Meanwhile, similar scenes throughout the country played out. Can support us completed novel house in link below clip. Thank you for coming and love the sharing story.